Hello, I'm Stephen Ho, trader and founder of The Stop Hunter. Trading or picking the right direction of whatever you're trading can just feel sometimes like flipping a coin and that can be very, very frustrating. And if your luck is out, then your luck in trading well can be very, very out. Fortunately for us though, there is a but, and that but comes through a strategy that uses options that anyone can learn that lets you take advantage of price movement in either direction. So that means you don't have to call it right so long as that price does move. So in this course, we are gonna pull that strategy to pieces. We're gonna define it. I'm gonna give you all the theory you need to know around options, technical analysis, and trading to make this strategy happen for your trading. I'm gonna show you how to find stocks and other markets to trade. We're gonna go through loads of examples. And like I say, by the end of this course, you'll be able to go away and apply what you've learned to your world of trading. So. Let's take a quick look at an example to illustrate the problem and the idea behind this strategy. We are going to focus on US stock Peloton. They're the fitness company that boomed during the coronavirus uh, lockdown period. So we're going to use this to just highlight the problem that you face when trading you know, stocks typical to this or for that matter, any other market. So we've gone back in time to late 2019 when Peloton went public around mid $20. And I'm gonna draw your attention to that red circled area. Those red and green blocks are earnings periods and they are done quarterly for all US companies. And when they announce those results, the company, we can ascertain their performance. Now you can see red ones are when they've been bad earnings, green are good earnings. And we can see how the price over the COVID period just rocketing on up to those highs in you know the $160, $170 very quickly over 2020 and then pulled seriously back down into sort of the 80 zone. And then we've got a couple of red blocked um, earnings periods. And we can see that actually from the first one there that the price did fall heavily. So is coronavirus easing off? Who knows? we didn't all know and then we've got this second one around you know november really important to see the results come out as we're going to see in a minute through the replay and we can see a massive drop a one day drop 31 percent and that price kept on moving down and down until it actually finished down minus 65 percent where it is today but the big question is We've seen green earnings periods where the price has gone down. We've seen red earning periods where the price has gone up. And what do we do? You know, it's confusing. It's a 50-50 coin flip. You know, do we buy the stock because we still think coronavirus is going, you know, to continue? Is it weakening? Should we sell the stock? Should we close our existing positions? What do we do? There's a lot of confusion there and actually playing earnings season is really risky and quite dangerous to your portfolio. So we need a strategy, an idea of how we can actually play these type of price movements. We come up to these red and green you know, blocks, those earnings seasons, and we don't really know what way the price is going to how the market's going to interpret it so this is what this strategy is all about it's being able to play those big moves in either direction to our benefit we don't actually care which way it goes so long as the price moves and that's like i say what this strategy is all about next earnings is up 10th of may for peloton so you know is it bullish is it bearish have they recovered are they still selling you know their bikes are they doing different things better worse we don't really know and that's the whole point of the thing and that is to our advantage with this strategy because we can make money in either direction so what is the solution well the solution is to trade using options and putting together a combination of options positions to create a specific payoff 
profile. Now remember, we will win this trade strategy if the price moves either up or down, but we will lose if it moves nowhere. So this is a strategy all about volatility. So we need to understand volatility and the right time to put this trade on and take it off. And we also need to understand the risk and rewards involved and the reasons, the theory for putting this type of strategy in place. But it is very simple. Anyone can do it. You just got to get basic understanding of options trading and like I say the rules and the theory underlying the strategy and then take that away and apply it to your trading. So there is further support and supporting materials for this course available via my website www.thestophunter.co.uk or through my YouTube channel called The Stop Hunter and also via the free traders club I run on Discord where anyone is welcome and like I say you can chat and talk to other traders and members about you know this type of strategy or anything involved in the world of trading and I'll put all that information available to you through the website like I say www.thestophunter.co.uk you can also find it on the YouTube channel. So what resources, tools are you going to need to make this course work? Well, if you want to just do the course for academic purposes, you want to educate yourself in this type of trading, you don't need anything at all. Just sit back and watch, maybe decide at the end of the course what you want to do. But if you want to take the course from the world of theory into the practical world of trading, I think you're going to probably need three different things. Now the first is a technical analysis charting package. Now in this course I'm going to be using TradingView. You can use your own if you've got one. This is quite high level technical analysis for this strategy so it is quite straightforward and your package probably covers what we need but if you want to find out about TradingView then visit my website www.thestophunter.co.uk for more information there. Secondly, you are going to need a broker. Now, it doesn't matter what markets you're trading, whether it's stocks, commodities, stock market indexes, you know, whatever it might be that takes your fancy, you're going to need a broker. Now, in this course, I'm going to focus in on stocks, specifically US stocks, and I'm going to be using a broker called First Trade. I'm based in the UK, but it's they offer international accounts so I can tap into the US stock market and that's what uh, you've got to think about when looking for a broker um, in the market that you want to get involved with do they offer access from a you know foreign location does regulation impact that selection process drop me a line um, or from the email that I've given out already and I can help you find the appropriate broker. But like I said, for this course, I'm going to focus on stocks, US stocks, and be using First Trade. Now, thirdly, and finally, I'm going to call this other tools, other resources. It's web based applications, um, that sort of thing that we will talk about and go through. You know, as we cover off the course, it, we don't need any specifics yet. You don't need to go out and get anything yet. You know, have a look, define your strategy and your trading plan, and then pick off what you need to do. You don't need anything, like I say, just at the moment on that front. So, they're the three things technical analysis, charting package, broker, and like I say, we're going to do the tools as we, you know, come across them. So, that is. Is what you need for resources and then we need to look into you know the specifics of the course with a bit of housekeeping which comes up next 
So to get the maximum from the course, I'd like to go through a bit of housekeeping first. And the first thing you'll see is a whole bunch of symbols. Please do pay attention to these because they are there for a reason. Now the first one is a uh, warning symbol and that's there as sort of a highlighter that you know something's worth paying attention to. Then there's the magnifying glass, uh, it's a concept check and the uh, megaphone, uh, something important to take note of. You see the exercise book, obviously an exercise for you to do and the light bulb is a tip from my vast database of experience in the subject. It's also important to understand how the course is structured and I've given it more of a, a, a university type of feel where I'm going to first of all give a classroom style lecture that will be followed up with further examples uh, to prove out um, cases of point within the lecture and then finally where appropriate I'll give you some practical exercises for you to get stuck into just to cement the learning from the lecture and that's pretty much how I want to structure the course um, like I say that structure will remain in place where appropriate and finally the actual course support if you've got any further questions queries need any help around any of the content then get in touch with me directly through the course or by email at info at the stop hunter dot co dot uk options and options trading can be a wild dangerous beast if you don't know what you're doing with them once you spend that bit of time getting to know them, how they work, understanding the risks and rewards, they can be a very effective trading option for you. So for those that are a little rusty around the options or brand new to the options world, and I've put together this quick start guide to get you going. Now we've got a lot to cover off on this quick start guide. Firstly, we're gonna look at what options are and why you'd want to trade them. And then you're going to look at how to trade options and then into the key terminology, the words, the language you need to know straight away. Then four basic options trading strategies, then a bit more around the practicality of actually trading options. So let's dive straight into options theory then. So firstly, what are options and why would you want to trade them? So what are exactly then options? Now getting back to raw basics, an option is a financial instrument. It's a derivative and it's based on the value of an underlying stock. It could be commodity, it could be currency pair, whatever it is. We're going to be focusing more on the stocks in this example because it's a bit more straightforward and more popular. But like I say, it is based, it's a derivative of an underlying security. Now the options contract built around that underlying asset, whatever market that might be, gives and grants the right, but not the obligation to someone to buy or sell an underlying asset at a set price on or before a certain date. Each contract will have a specific expiration date and we'll dive into expiration dates in a minute. And this is the time which the holder of the option must you know, exercise that contract. And the price of the option is known as the strike price. And how do you trade these? Well, they're typically bought and sold through, uh, especially if we're talking stocks, online retail brokers. And I'm gonna be using uh, one that I use to trade options with to lay out some examples. So if you're familiar with futures and you could start to see some similarities, i.e. they both can be bought or sold in the future, but I hope you can now see that options have the big difference and it's all around the option to deliver or take ownership of that underlying 
asset. So that's really where it gets the name option from because it simply gives you an option with what you want to do when you come to exercise your option. So I think one of the big takeaways of uh, trading options is that if you're the holder, you know, unlike in say futures, you're not actually required to have to buy or sell the asset, you know, the underlying asset, if you decide actually not to, which is a great advantage to have. Why trade options? For me, it's down to two things. The first one is leverage and the second one is risk management. Let's have a look at that first one about leverage. Let's use the stock Tesla as our example of how you could potentially use options. Now, Tesla have been coming off since the start of 2022, but your point of view might be that things are about to sort of peter out and turn bullish once more. So in options world, we've got two really basic starter options that we could play here. We could go out and buy the underlying stock or we could buy a call option. Now, there are many um, variants on the call option that we could use. And um, as you get more experience, you're gonna learn it. But for this example, I just wanna show you the underlying stock versus a call option to show you the power of leverage. So we've got $100,000 in our trading account and we wanna buy 100 shares of Tesla that is going to cost us an outright $85,045. Now the alternative is to buy a call option. So we've done our homework and we think that the Tesla stock is no problem going to get past $900 and it can do that quite easily by April the 14th. So we've selected the April the 14th expiry date the 900 strike and it's cost us 59.95 um, per option to do that now there's a multiplier factor in there of 100 because it's buying um, 100 shares so the actual total cost of that trade is 5995 so let's see how those two trades the buying of the 100 shares and the buying of the one uh, option contract played out. So let's just pretend that the stock price went roaring on up to 1150 ish dollars. Elon Musk had a great quarter, great results. The price just went booming on upwards. What would have happened to our two trades? Well, our 100 shares that we bought would have made us $30,309, which is a 35.64% return. Very nice indeed but what about the call option well remember it cost us $59.95 to get in to that trade for the one options contract that price then would have moved to $193.59 don't forget that multiplier of 100 that then gives us a great profit of $19,359 which is a 322.92% return. That is a massive return on investment compared to the 100 shares. Why? Because we've outlaid so little. That is the power of leverage to the upside. And with options that can also help you to the downside as well. So if our trade, for example, went badly wrong, So the stock price fell to say, argument's sake, 640-ish dollars. Then our shares, 100 shares, would have lost $20,824, which is a 24.49% return loss. Whereas our call option would have lost only the amount we paid for it, which was the $5,995. So yes, that's 100% loss, but in this instance, it's protected us from a serious downside move. So again, 
you know that's helped us in our position and the other reason why I like options so much like I said the second point it is fantastic for risk management trade management controlling a position and creating shaping a potential outcome and as you get more experience in options you'll see that you can do so many different things with them to create different payout profiles on the option strategies you are using so how do you trade options in the retail world well you can have to find yourself a broker now the popular area at the moment is stock options especially US stock options so if you're from the US then it's very easy you find yourself a broker and I use uh, first trade there's many out there to use broker wise but I like first trade it gives me all I need you know low fees costs plus you know the markets like I say that I want to get involved with and you can see here you know it allows you to create positions you can see potential losses potential returns you know the risks involved it's got some great um, resource to help you in your trading options journey now historically it's been quite hard to trade US stock options if you're outside the US but for example this first trade account well, I'm from the UK and I've got my account open you can open yourself an international account the process is really really straightforward and by opening one of these accounts it's going to give you access to US stocks and options which are very difficult to normally get your hands on now here's the list on the screen pause it see if your country's on it and you can open yourself a first trade account should be free to do so and then you know see if you like it or not I'll put a link in the description below for you to follow but as you can see it covers off you know a big swathe of the world's countries the key here though is to get the broker that suits your trading style you're happy with the platform what it offers and I've done some videos on that within the channel so if you're subscribed dig through the archives to find those give you the hints and tips on finding the best broker for you now at the moment you still might be very confused with the terminology and language being used it will all make sense to you but I'm just going to go over now some key words terms phrases that you must know if you want to get on in the world of options the first thing you've got to know with options are the types of options that you are using are they either American options or European options don't worry about the geographical nature there they just are trying to relate to two specific types of option type now the American option allows you to exercise on any trading day on or before expiration whereas a European option only on the expiry date now you're not probably going to have to worry too much about that because most are done the American way so that gives you the flexibility to trade but just make sure now let's define exactly what expiration is well it's a date at which the options ability to be exercised ceases and the expiration date is the last day on which an option can be exercised now we when selecting our options to trade need to work out the expiration time you know the chance of our strategy idea coming to fruition have we given it enough time before that you know expiration date raises its head and as you get into understanding the options world more then you come into contact with something called the Greeks and theta and that's the cost of holding that option so the expiration date very important for many numbers of reasons it goes into the pricing of the options as well and the length of time adds or detracts from the value of the option so what else do we need to know now the strike price is another key variable you are going to have to select when picking your options what 
is it sometimes known as the exercise price or it's the price at which an asset can be bought or sold by the buyer of a call or put option so like we saw in our tesla example back there we picked the 900 strike that's because we thought the price could go up through there again that determines and can help determine the price of the option that we pay and a lot of the other risk variables that go around you know putting together an options trade now if we take those last two concepts a bit further that's the expiration date and the strike price so when the option contract ends and you need to have been making money before this point to uh, you know realize any benefit out of the options contract where that price sits relative to the strike price has three names the first one's in the money which means your put or call option is making money i.e the underlying price is for a call option is greater than the strike price and for a put option the underlying price is less than the strike price then we have out of the money which means your put or call option is not making money and for a call option the current price is less than the strike price and for a put option the current price is greater than the strike price and you'll also hear the third term at the money which means your put or call option is trading around break even i.e close to the strike price now volatility is very important in options trading and it's the measure of the fluctuation in the price movement in the asset market trading over a period of time and it's a huge important component to pricing or getting a value for the price of your options contract now historical volatility is based on past data it's a standard deviation of whatever you're trying to trade you know based normally on the closing price over a period of time now implied volatility is the real key one here and it's a calculated um, number derived from normally like options pricing models or the trader themselves making the market and traders can use this take advantage of it when there is a big discrepancy often between implied and historical volatility now volatility and implied volatility is also used in trying to work out where for example the future price of the asset you're looking at might be heading so it's got many uses but you've got to be aware of volatility now the Greeks are all around risk management and understanding the structure of your options trades or portfolio now really as a, a newbie to options world you're only going to start off needing to understand delta but concepts like theta which is time to gay and how much it costs you to hold the option or vega which is volatility and how that impacts your trading especially if you were to, you know to create strategy you might have heard of like straddles and strangles all very important but let's focus in on delta to start with because when you're buying your first option you might be thinking or being asked or looking at a chain of options that are based on delta so what does the delta mean well in simple terms it's a ratio comparing the change in the price of the asset to the corresponding change in the price of the option so for example if we were trading oil and it had a delta value of 0.15 this means that if the underlying stock goes up by one dollar per barrel then the option price will rise 0.15 cents per barrel so the nearer a delta of one you are you're basically trading the underlying asset so the question is where do you buy your delta well we're going to look at that shortly now obviously you've got to somehow come up with a price for an option when you're going to you know, buy or sell those options if you looked on a broker like um, first trade how do they do that well 
how you use options pricing models you don't really need to know about that too much you will do eventually as you get more experience because knowing how their price is very useful and can be taken advantage of now one of the most common pricing models is the black skulls model and here it is for a call or put don't get too scared by the maths it is a lot more straightforward than you think what is important is understanding the inputs into the price of the option and there's six basic ones the current stock price the strike price the time to expiration the volatility of the stock price the risk-free interest rate and dividends expected during the life of the option if you can understand how they work then how they would impact an options price then you're in a good place now the options multiplier is all about standardization of the marketplace now the starter options trader often forgets about the multiplier but you really really got to have that in the back of your mind when calculating you know, potential risks and returns now in stocks you will probably almost always come across a multiplier of a hundred so what does that mean that means one options contract controls a hundred shares of the underlying stock trading options is all about the calls and the puts but what does that exactly mean well buying a call option gives you a long position in the market and selling a call option gives you a short position in the market and then if we flip over to the put option buying a put option gives you a short position in the market and selling a put option gives you a long position in the market so the buyers of the options whether puts or calls get the bonus with an options contract that they are not obliged to buy or sell they get the choice to exercise their right only if they want to whereas the sellers of the calls are in much more of a dangerous risk position so really selling options is for the more advanced options trader out there and they are obliged to buy or sell and has to make good the options contract and therefore has unlimited risk so like i say don't jump into selling options straight away get experience with the basics first let's look at four basic simple options strategies now don't be put off because they are basically and simple we've seen how effective a simple strategy is that call against the outright stock you know of tesla so these can be as equally as effective and useful in your trading armory but they're a great place to get you going and to understand how options work now the four basic strategies are a long call short call long put and short put now in the world of options trading now the options trader likes to visualize these trades by creating what's known as payoff diagrams and they better illustrate the potential outcome of the position they're trying to get and you can put combinations together to see where the profit and loss lies where the risk will be now this is what it looks like generally and we're going to dig into each one of those individually because these are the four key starting strategies now remember i did say selling um, options is very dangerous so you're probably going to whittle that down to two basic ones to start with which is the long call and the long put but we're going to have a look now at those four so first up is the long call and this is a bullish point of view you want the price of say the stock option like tesla to be going up now on the diagram here you can see that tick shape that red line right so the red line there is the price that you've paid so you've instantly gone into the negative but as that slope goes upwards and the price increases you can see your profit increasing so that red line is the profit and loss line of 
the trade and you see the X there that's the strike price that's where you're going to start breaking even plus the cost of the option you see that as that fades to that line and then pushes on upward so what you want for the option here is for the price to go on upwards if it doesn't go on upwards and it falls under the strike price you lose the price you paid for the option now our second strategy is the short call and that's the opposite of the long call it's going to be someone taking the opposite point of view to you so we flipped that payoff profile chart the other way up so if you were selling the short call you'd make money you get the premium price in your pocket to start with and what you're hoping for is that the stock price does not increase because if it does and goes past that strike price you are going to seriously lose a potential huge amount of cash so very risky to do but the opposite of the long call so next up is the long put now this is if your point of view is bearish now sometimes it's really hard to short stocks anyway due to borrowing requirements etc whereas the long put here allows you a lot easier to go short of the market and what can we see from the payoff diagram well we can see that from the right hand side this time that the cost to us is set from the beginning the premium paid and we really want that price to go downwards and downwards heavily it's got to get past x the strike price for us to break even as you can see the PL line that red line starts going up and making us money when the price goes down our final starter strategy is the short put and that's simply just the opposite of the long put we are selling the put to someone else whose point of view is long and what do we want to happen is we actually don't want the uh, stock price say of tesla that we looked at earlier to be going down because if it does there's an unlimited risk to that downside it gets through the strike price as you can see the profit and loss line that red line increases significantly as the price goes down so from the short put point of view you know we are more bullish to neutral the price so there's the four basic starter strategies and I've gone through those really because they give you the building blocks to put combinations and ideas together we'll look at two more a bit more sophisticated strategies just to give you a taster in a moment but now let's let take a look at how you we can actually you know maybe in practice trade these options so you're probably now thinking how do I come up with these trade ideas I've got this great new tool called options trading how do I come up with ideas to actually use options well it's exactly the same way as you would any other style of trading you've got a point of view but just remember options allow you to be more specific you can be more bullish less bullish neutral bearish you know create sideways type trades the choice is yours that's the beauty really of um, options trading but essentially that point of view that you're going to create is mainly going to come around from three key areas technical analysis fundamental analysis or quantitative analysis now you might be already familiar with those and why not take those ideas that you have there and try applying them and creating option strategies around them work out the payoff profiles you know does trading options add more benefit than just trading an outright stock position or a CFD or a spread bet for example so like I say this really you know is a more advanced process to get really tailored in on the direction of the asset that you are 
looking at whilst controlling the risk side of things so you know giving you a better starting point from which to take your trading let's just take a look at a typical example of how to actually put on a options trade so we're back to the broker first trade again and this time our trade of choice is going to be Exxon Mobile for whatever reason and it's come from one of those three methods I touched on there we think the price of oil is going to go skyrocketing up and Exxon Mobile are going to benefit through their stock price so from your knowledge already of options we could you know either buy the shares or we could use the leverage and the risk management of maybe buying a call so what uh, call would we buy in this instance well the first thing you could think of is remember that term delta now at the money means the price of which we are at now so that is a delta of half so you could buy the at the money options and you're basically buying the stock for half price essentially or if you're feeling more ambitious and this is where you know the science of options come in it's about the probability of success the further and further you go away then the more unlikely it is that your option strike is going to be hit so if you go down to a 10 delta option for example it's almost getting into the realms of gambling unless you know something about that stock and that the price is going to move quite heavily to get you in the money so this is why you need to understand and learn about delta and you know the nuances of options trading to help you you know create a typical you know trading strategy and trade so this is where having a good broker with you know the tools especially if you're new to options trading can help you out now here we are with our Exxon Mobil idea now you can see here we've got like a simulator of what is going on and we can pick our strategy through there and we could go bullish for example we just want that long call just for the moment keep it simple and now there's the trade and remember these terms we've been talking about we want to buy just one um, option contracts so that's going to be a hundred shares remember the word multiplier then the expiry date how long is it going to take to achieve where we think the price could be heading to and the strike price is you know that price that we got to get above to make the money and then we can decide whether we want a call or a put we obviously want a call now at the moment it defaulted to the sort of at the money um, strike here and we can change that we might want to change the date but we think maybe for this instance April is far enough out for our target we think it's going to get to about $90 now if we scroll down through the ladder here of prices we can actually see that 77 and a half there's the delta it's 52% so it's virtually at the money because we know that 50 0.5 is exactly at the money so we want to go a bit further out because we're a bit more ambitious on the price and you can see how much that's in terms of standard deviation moves so we need a one st standard deviation move in the price to get it through into this area and you can see the cost of the option falling as we go further and further away and here we are like I said into that 10 11 sort of low delta which is you know big risk taking but we we might think you know with our knowledge that actually well look at today in the news something happens in Ukraine Russia and the oil price is going to boost up there's lack of supply you know everyone wants oil all of a sudden again then maybe it's not out of the realms of possibility so for this example we're going to have the 16 delta it's cost 77 cents per options contract remember the multiplier again so we click on that you can see there's the premium that's what we'll pay that's what we lose if we go all wrong and there's our strike price call cool. and 
we've created that um, expiry position so that's what we want to trade and then if you actually do is you hit the trade button it'll ask you to verify the details and off you go it's as simple as that we can also run the scenario calculator here for our trade so if we go down to adjusting the price so currently saying if the price went to 86.48 this would be our return on the call okay so we move that up and there we go we've actually got two calls in play here here's our 87 and a half call and here's our 75 call so that's the more at the money one this is our more ambitious one and if for example the price took off to let's say just under $90 then we would make this size of return 192% which is you know pretty monster really in terms of return for what you've outlaid and you can click again on the actual setup you can see the cost was $77 for a return of $148 a nice you know 192% return but what would happen to the stock price in that same you know scenario So here you can see that we bought the 100 shares. Yes, we've made 15.8% and a $1,200 profit. But compare that again to our call option. Yeah, not as much profit, but look at the you know percentage return that we've got there. The max risk in this trade to the shares is obviously down to zero, 7,750. The max risk on the call was $77 so if it all went wrong we're only going to lose $77 and you know we can adjust that price like I say to show us that so as soon as the price has got just below that break even number and the further we go down it's all zero because the option is going to expire worthless but as that price goes down notice how the shares still losing value still losing money so you've only lost the 77 compared to you know price goes down to 66 which it was back in early 2022 then you know you losing a thousand dollars so typical example there for you of how to start thinking about trading options technical analysis is a key component for the success of this strategy and I'm going to give you the parts required to make the strategy work at this level. Now you might have a different background in technical analysis, use different tools and indicators, feel free to add them into the mix. There is no right or wrong answer. This is the sort of stuff that works for me at the basic level. I have different strategies um, around this as well, using different types of technical analysis and you can do the same. But as you get the idea, behind the strategy then like I say you can then make it your own now there's five key starting areas that we need to know about uh, we need to know about candlestick charts volume volatility price patterns and Fibonacci's that's the five that we're going to need for this uh, course I'm going to go through them from a basic starting point but along the way I say add in the idea of why they're important to this strategy so please don't skip this section at all it's very relevant and very important like I say to the success of this strategy so what is a candlestick chart well in my opinion it's just a better looking bar chart it still involves the same four inputs and it still looks over the same time periods whether that be a one minute one hour one day or one week so instead of calling them bars like we did in the bar chart we call them candlesticks and like i said they still give us that same open close high low information but in my opinion they are much more colorful and easier to understand and interpret what is going on 
So the goals of the candlestick chart are really twofold. They're to display the price date in a more visual format, a more, so I suppose, storytelling format. And by putting combinations of candlesticks together, you can confirm price trends and determine continuations or reversals in the price. So let's, before we move on, compare the bar chart to the candlestick chart, those individual components, to see what the main differences are and the terminologies between the two. So at the top of the slide we see the bar chart versus the candlestick chart and we can see on the left the bar chart, the open, high, low, close data and on the right the candlestick chart. Uh, the bit in the middle is known as the real body and that really joins up the open and close uh, prices so it creates like I said a body and then the two points to the one at the top one at the bottom which then join into the high and the low are known as the upper shadow and the lower shadow or wicks so that's really the only difference and in terms of colouring um, it normally defaults as white and black on the charts but I use green and red similar to the bar chart look but you can create what other any other colour combination that you so desire but a bullish day you know the close is higher than the open and a down day is the close is lower than the open and that's it and as I hope you can start to see a much more visual way of looking at um, the price analysis on the charts than the bar chart. So here's just a typical example using the FTSE 100 of the candlestick chart on a daily prices. Here blacks are down and whites are up and it paints a different picture. It's easier to see trends and changes in those trends I think a lot more with the candlestick chart. So how do we interpret the candlestick? Well the different body shadow combinations can have many different meanings and they are very good for recognizing like we said either continuation points or reversal points and hopefully you can now start to see that you know that these candles are giving off a psychological profile of what's occurring in the market so there's five main features determine the character of any particular day the color of the body i.e. if it's red or green the range of the day the high or low the range of that body that bit in the middle the open and close the range of the upper shadow and the range of the lower shadow those wicks so let's take a look at some examples just a note on the patterns before looking at some individual ones there are I don't know how many in combination but the rule is that you would go up to a maximum of seven candles to tell that story normally five but you can start from as little as one and they've got some great names like hanging man the hammer or abandoned baby um, the more candles in the pattern the more likely the price confirmation like I say there I look at maybe two to five for the best patterns and you don't need to know them all it's up to you if this is an area you want to specialize in people just use candlestick charts on their own to trade and they build their whole career around all these different patterns I like to use them in combination with other things but again I'm presenting this here for you so you get a starter and you can decide where you want to take it so let's have a look at uh, some patterns in my trading I don't really use that many candlestick chart patterns maybe no more than a dozen but I've put in these two grey boxes below my favourite uh, patterns. On the left you see something called doges and they are very good for spotting indecision in the marketplace and often when you see these the price can reverse and turn on themselves and there's four different doji patterns there 
and you can see the higher the body is in the chart uh, the candlestick the more bullish it is and vice versa uh, when they turn red and the body's at the bottom and in the middle it really is an indecisive market now on the right we have something called the evening and morning star patterns and these again are great for reversal points if you can see the arrows say on the left one the evening star the trend has come up the black arrow then we have this play out of three candlesticks in that formation we had a little gap in there as well it almost looks like an island reversal from our earlier knowledge on gaps and then the price comes back down and again it's vice versa for the morning star which is more of a bullish reversal after the trend the price trend has been coming down so they're just some of my favorite candlestick chart patterns but there are countless combinations and if you want to get into candlestick charting you know please do it's very good it's very effective and it's great for interpreting what is going on in the chart so some tips for you on candlesticks the reliability improves with candlesticks if you team them up with other forms of technical analysis such as the oscillators like stochastics rsi we're going to look at those later and in the example here you can see fitbit um, now part of amazon uh, their share price and in form of candlestick with the rsi and volume and a moving average on the price to start to help us make a more informed decision so the stages to follow when making a candlestick assessment firstly you've got to identify the trend you can use pre-signal oscillators to give a trend signal for example using a moving average to filter out and we confirm with a candlestick pattern and further confirmation can be done through say looking at volume and as I mentioned just previously oscillators are good for aligning with the candlestick for reversal patterns so the pros and cons of candlesticks it's all about visualization really it gives a much more transparent picture of what's going on and gives you a unique insight it uses all that information like the bar chart does the open high low close it works very well with other forms of filters and oscillators you can get to see reversals in the price a lot more it can be used in all markets and it works very well for traders and investors in all time frames that means down to the really fast stuff to like the slow weekly monthly looks the downside you need all that data to make it work you will need a bit of experience to translate and not all data vendors data vendors will give open prices but more and more now everyone's coming to a line so it's probably not so much of a con these days um, they're all pretty much doing the same thing so more pros than cons and candlestick charts are really useful so let's look now at setting up our charts and a few examples around the candlestick chart so this is where we left our chart example last for the bar charts it was the Australian dollar against the US dollar at 15 minutes and it's exactly the same process so we go up to the indicator so the chart type we find candles and here we've got two different types we've got hollow ones which look like that so they're basically a transparent sort of background and we've got our standard candles which are more solid and I use the standard ones there and again it's the same thing change through the time periods let's look at a week for the Australian dollar and look at the way we can start to see trends very easily let's find something else let's look at um, I don't know gold for example see what's been happening in that market commodity there's our drop list we've got various different options Let's look at this one and it's just going to update and there we go that's what's happened in the weekly price of gold and we have a down run bullish and has been in the last few weeks selling off and around the 1800 level but look for the patterns there's our dojis there and there these are different patterns as well that you can learn all about so 
start looking at these candlestick charts and translating what is going on in the price action. Volume is really a straightforward, simple concept to understand. Now in this section, I'm going to use the example of Tesla to show you how it works, but we're also going to look at volume with a twist, which can help us with our options strategy. Now volume is a measure of how much an asset has been traded in a given period of time, whether that's weekly, when you chart daily, minutes, like I say, it's just a measure of how much has been traded in that time period. And it can be an excellent confirmatory tool to aid your price analysis. Now on our chart here, we've got the weekly Tesla chart and you can see down the bottom there, those green and red lines, the green bars suggest a bullish up day for Tesla and the red ones a down day and you can see the size of the volume traded and we can also marry that in like I say to what goes on with the price. Now that sits on the X axis of the chart. Now that's the traditional way of looking at it and it's a very useful tool but there is another way which is going to help us with our strategy. Now you can see on the Tesla chart, the yellow and blue lines up the right hand side Y axis there. And all we've done there is we've flipped the volume by date to the volume by price. So now we can see what the important price levels are at. So on this chart here, you can see around $150, $160 for Tesla there was an awful amount of price action. Then we have these little gaps where there's no price action at all and it's like jumps to that next level. And you can see that occurring all the way up until today's price where we've got less volume trading at the moment, but we still like that, say have these waves of volume by price going up the side. Now this is very useful to see where, like I say, the price is accumulating, where the interest, the key, you know, trading points are. And like I say, you will see very soon how this type of analysis can aid our strategy. So if you're using TradingView, how can you get those two volume indicators onto your chart? Very simply go to the top, hit the indicators tab. And for our volume at price profile, we just want to type in V P VR, there it is there, click on that and then set it up to how you want it to look. And if we wanted volume, again simply just type in volume and there it is down in blue and it'll add it on as we see it there, but you can move it above or below the chart and set up any colours or add other indicators on top of that as you see fit and get more familiar with technical analysis. As you can see there's a lot more volume tools and indicators you can also use. But for the purpose of our strategy, these are the two that we will be using. So within technical analysis, the chart patterns are put into two price movement buckets. One which is that prices continue and the other is that prices reverse. And by doing that, we're helping the user of the charts have some sort of clue as to what direction the price will take next. So when a trend is developing, it normally has a period of time when it evolves into one of these two buckets, you know, the reversal or continuation. And this evolution into its future direction is captured within these price patterns. So what are they exactly? They're just really just pictures or formations of price which appear on your chart and it can be in any time frame, the fast ones, the one minute, two minute, five minute, 15, one hour, daily, slow than that, weekly, monthly, they work throughout all time frames and all markets, whether it's FX, commodities, stocks, the lot. They can be used you know, generically across every category. And they do have some predictive and probabilistic value. And those two main camps that we talked about, the continuation and reverse, are further split down 
into uh, two unique um, buckets of much more individual uh, patterns. So bucket one on the left we have reversal patterns and the more popular ones in that bucket are heads and shoulders pattern, double, triple tops and bottoms, saucers, spikes and V reversals. And on the continuation patterns on the right we have pretty much triangle wedge like patterns and those triangles and wedges have their own unique uh, setup. We have symmetrical, ascending, um, triangles and wedges and we have the same with flags, pennants and we also have descending triangles and wedges. For the purpose of this course we are only interested in the uh, continuation patterns and the reason for that is is as you will see these uh, continuation patterns form periods of consolidation and then the price breaks out normally quite dramatically in one direction or the other and that is what we are looking for in our options strategy so like I say we're only going to be needing requiring like I say, continuation pattern on the charts. So moving on to continuation patterns with continuation patterns you're looking to move out of an instrument sideways holding period and continue in the way of the previous trend. So remember that in the way of the previous trend. The continuation pattern is quite often shorter in duration than the reversal and happens more frequently. So there's going to be more opportunities for you there, especially in the shorter time periods. You know, that's the, you know, in terms of your charts, there's lower time frames less than daily period so intraday these are more common types of things to look out for now there's four main triangle based continuation patterns and they do look like on the charts like their names and we have the symmetrical one the ascending descending and expanding and broadening that last one's quite rare and hard to spot and it has three higher peaks and two declining troughs now the symmetrical um, one has well, what you're looking for is four touches inside the pattern and a breakout of that pattern often occurs two thirds along the triangle. And obviously as a time limit where the two lines meet, then it's now and void. And the ascending the price height of the pattern at the widest, add that onto the breakout for a price target and the descending is the target measurement as ascending but in reverse. So we've got two examples here. We've got the symmetrical bullish triangle pattern playing out on the left. Notice how many touches it has inside it. It doesn't have to have exactly that and the more, I guess, the better. And then it breaks out about two thirds of the way. And remember that's subjective as well. You can't hold it to exactly two thirds, but what you can look for is extra confirmation. It's what I've crudely drawn on below is a volume breakout. So if you're looking at stocks or commodities like we talked about, or futures then you watch that volume and if it coincides with that breakout then it's a better confirmatory signal and then on the right hand side we have an ascending uh, triangle type pattern is exactly the same we've got the movement within the pattern and then it breaks out so AB the height of that ascending you can add on to create CD as a potential price target and again accompanied by a spike in volume and here we have our last two patterns. It's the reverse with the descending bearish breakout. Exactly the same. We've got a volume spike coinciding with the breakout. And then on the right hand side, we've got this sort of megaphone type event or broadening triangle. And it's very rare to spot, but we're looking for a divergence in the top and the bottom part of the triangle. So that's the triangle patterns wrapped up and it's a very similar um, set of rules to the flags and pennant shapes and as you get into technical analysis and you want to use these type of patterns then I suggest digging into what patterns extra there are like the flags and the pennants but the rules are the same look for the volume breakout say for example on the flag you use the trend up as the measuring stick that you add on to the breakout so again 
you know, dig around, get some experience, look at your charts and start drawing on some patterns. And here's an example on the FTSE 100. Remember, it's not a science, it's subjective. So they are my opinion. You might have a different opinion, but just to give you an idea of what's going on. So on the left, you can see a typical triangle pattern. Then next to that, we've got a pennant and it's a pennant because of that you know, flag penalty type play out. And then we've got just another couple of, you know, continuation patterns breaking out on the right hand side there. So these tools, these patterns can be very useful for estimating future price targets, but there are a couple of further rules you need to be aware around this. Now for continuations, the price target in an uptrend is measured from the start point of the trend, you know, that's the breakout point at the base of the trend or most recent congestion pattern to the highest high. And the move is then projected up from the point of breakout from the triangle flag or pennant pattern to arrive at the target. So going back to our charts, how do you actually draw those? Really, it's down to you using the tools available to you. It's down that drawing side on the right hand side. And here I sort of see a head and shoulders pattern. It's on the US Canadian dollar, one hour chart. So let's draw it to see if we can find it. So we've got this loose shoulder sort of here. We've got our head of here. Oops. The other shoulder there. We've sort of got a neckline going across here, and that there's the breakout downwards for the price. No, but that's my opinion. You might not see that at all. You might see a host of other patterns. You know, you've got wedges coming over here on the right, triangle type patterns, and the price then continues upwards. You know, you've got another one there, like that, and the price continues upwards. The important point of that heads and shoulder pattern, though, was that the trend was moving up into it. it wasn't coming down from that way or sideways it was coming up so that was signifying more of an important or possibility of the price reversing so a bit of practice for you go away get into your charts and have a play putting on the continuation patterns remember it is subjective but see what happens afterwards to you know the price action once you've seen those patterns drawn them on like i said this is going to be very valuable for our options strategy coming up soon so understand how the patterns work how you set price targets just get familiar with them so when you see them you know what to do next so there's a lot to it but all you really need to know it's all about behavior and psychology and also about human and market interaction it is in essence a self-fulfilling prophecy as what to a reason why it works and if you want to get back into the nitty-gritty of Fibonacci then you can do um, but you might have seen it when you throw a stone into a pond the ripples are full Fibonacci and it has been used throughout time in all sorts of application architecture etc but it does work however strange the concept is and it works in all time frames and that's really because technology now has made it very easy to use this type of tool over your charts and everybody is doing it. The key numbers you need to take away from Fibonacci are 0 0.618, 0 0.382 and the zero and one lines that you use to find the high and lows and it is a great tool for finding support and resistance points. That means it's very good for our risk management and trade management of our trades and is placed on top of the price chart and all you need to know is where the low and the high are and this is the problem of Fibonacci it's very discretionary but 
everyone's doing the same sort of thing. And here you can see on the FTSE 100 here, these arrows are around the points of Fibonacci lines and the price just keeps bouncing to and fro around these lines proving that the Fibonacci lines works and I could show you hundreds of charts like this they just work so all you need to do is find the obvious high and lows of the trend and then place the Fibonacci around these points and then that will draw the lines in between for you and as you can see on the FTSE 100 there it was a great tool to use to find support and resistance levels So how do we create the Fibonacci lines? Well they're placed, as I said, on top of the price and these lines are created automatically but you've got to find the high and low. And I like to use a three different time period setup uh, to create a more accurate Fibonacci picture. Um, but like I said there at the bottom, all charting software should have this Fibonacci functionality now. It is very common used in all sorts of markets and types of trader. So this is my three step approach to setting the Fibonacci lines and we've got here the FTSE 100. It's a daily high Kanashi chart. You can use this approach across all charts, Renko, Line Break, Kagi, it works everywhere and first of all we need to break it down into time periods of the short medium and long term so I start with the long term first and go back over the previous year and look for the obvious highs and lows and we can see the beginning of 2020 and to the spring of 2020 look like that obvious highs and lows so we find our Fibonacci setup lines we draw them on we've got a nice double top there on the FTSE 100 we draw them back down and to the low we place them like so and that's our long-term support and resistance setup and is there anything obvious that we can see at the moment well there's around this 5900 area there's a lot of noise at the moment both to the upside and the downside support and resistance and then below that maybe 5450 around here and again up here at 6570 six, you know 6600 zone so that's the long term part of the equation and now we go to the medium term so that's like the last you know 3 to 6 months maybe well from 0 to 6 months i like to look just in case there's some obvious nearby highs and lows but if we go over that period and remember this isn't 100 percent exact science okay so if those highs and lows appear just either side don't worry you know of those time bands don't worry too much because this is a very discretionary subjective approach using fibonacci so part two again we're going to look for our highs and lows so i can see this one back in june and the lows may be we're going to take yeah, down here in September so that's going to be our next zone so again we draw on those Fibonacci lines actually because the price has been ranging for a while on the FTSE 100 in between this 5760 to 6230 these bands are going to be tight and it's starting to look little bit messy and it's going to get messier still because we now move on to the third part which is to then draw on the short term stuff so zero to a month or so is plenty any short term obvious action well the lows are as of you know the part two and the highs may be here in mid-september so we draw that on there's our highs down to the lows now at the moment that looks a complete unreadable mess so what we do then is zoom in on the chart we pull it open and what we're looking for is overlaps in those three time periods because I believe the more those different sub times you know the long medium and short overlap the more important the numbers are so we've got 
you know double overlap here double overlap there double overlap there it's close here so these are where I'd be taking important numbers for so we've got 5760 uh, we've got this overlap here at 5950 another one up at 6140 6230 and 6355 so I'd be using those as either support or resistance you know for stops targets to give me a more I'd like to use a friendly Fibonacci and I think more accurate way of using Fibonacci for setting those sort of levels. So I hope that gives you some idea of how you can use Fibonacci in your trading and especially for you know trade and risk management. So to conclude Fibonacci, a bit of homework for you. Um, firstly, take any daily chart in any market and find the highs and lows in the short, medium and long term. Then create that three-way process that I do that over those different time frames and see how the Fibonacci's line up and provide support and resistance levels and these in turn create entry and exit points for possible trading strategies and note if any of the three different Fibonacci setups you put on your chart overlap and those overlapping points can signify even stronger more important support and resistance areas and the takeaway Again, a very subjective process and there's no right or wrong high or low points, but always look for the obvious. This strategy is all about volatility. So you've got to understand it. You've got to understand where it comes from, how it's produced, the theory behind it, if you want to make this a success. We're going to look at two components of volatility that's historical and implied and see what they mean I'm also going to take a quick look at some technical analysis indicators that allow you to measure volatility so what is volatility well you've probably come across it in statistics or old maths or school classes or in your business or home life but we need to know what it means for financial markets. And in financial markets, it has a specific definition, and that is a, as a, a measure of the variation of a price of a financial instrument. And that can be either positive or negative. And this is represented and calculated over a given period of time. So, for example, we might have a currency pair like the GBP USD, and it might have a reading of plus minus 10 percent per annum and that means that the price from today could move either 10 percent in either direction over that next year based on a given volatility calculation so let's look at a quick example to see if you've got the general gist so below we've got a hypothetical example of two different instruments and as the trader which one would you want well, it's an obvious sort of leading question. You want the one on the left, the volatile asset, rather than the one on the right. Why? Because the one on the right is less volatile. It's too predictable. It's lifeless. And with no price movement like that, it's going to be really hard to trade. Whereas the one on the left has good swings, good movement, good action that we can get involved with to try and trade and make a profit from when it comes to using volatility in financial markets the ways and methods of calculating it are very very complex in some instances and we don't really need to know the complexity for this course but what we do need to know is that we're going to filter down our approach to just two types of generic volatility that of historic volatility volatility and that of implied volatility so what do we need to know we need to know that historical volatility is calculated based on the past performance of the asset being analyzed whereas implied volatility is a forward forecast given by traders the market based on their model of how that 
asset they are looking at or trading behaves. So why is understanding implied volatility important? Well, knowing where the price of an asset is likely to go and by how much is a very, very useful um, measure for your trading. It's great for gauging sentiment of any given asset. So the more the higher the volatility, you know, the more movement you're going to see in the price, the lower, the more stable. So that gives you a clue of you know what's going on in that asset. And it's also a forecast and gives us a clue of how the big guys, the big traders, the big flow of money are feeling about that market. And also this sort of implied volatility is very important for options traders and if anyone knows about options volatility is a key input into the pricing of options but to summarize all of this it's all encapsulated in the VIX volatility index that we will come across shortly. Now we've looked at implied volatility briefly, we've also got to consider historical volatility and how we can measure it using technical analysis. And there are many ways, but for this course we're going to have a look at the ATR, which is the average true range, and Bollinger Bands. So what is ATR? Well, it's just a simple, easily calculated measure, a proxy for volatility, and it makes the move in the price through the ATR indicator more transparent. And how is it calculated? Well, it's just a simple high low close calculation of a true range. You pick the period. Normally defaults to 14 days, but if you want to speed things up, 7, you know, you can use 20, 30, whatever fits into your backtest and strategy. It can be used to measure true breakouts and it's also very good for uh, factoring in and calculating say stop loss levels which we will look at forward in this strategy and also very good for risk management. So a quick example of ATR on crude WTI oil on a weekly chart. Now down the bottom there you can see that red line. Look how the line moves up when the price moves substantially. So here on the left you can see it moving down quite a lot and the volatility picking up. And how do you read it off? Well you go over to the right and actually it's giving you an actual physical number. So if the ATR read 6 it means the you know uh, movement, the volatility for that bar of the candlestick chart is $6. So if it's a daily one then the average range can be six dollars now as we see that number progressing upwards say we can assume an increase in the volatility of that instrument and then we can see it falling off suggesting less volatility and we could maybe you know utilize trend lines and other indicators on top of the ATR to capture potential breakouts in the you know, price of whatever asset you might be analyzing. But it is a very simplistic, very easy to use indicator that gives you a visual on what volatility is doing. And this strategy, as you will see, we want to move from a low volatility environment to a higher one. So hopefully this is getting you thinking of tools you can use to do such a thing. We're going to take a look at band-based indicators, and these are bands around a, you know, a price range, around the original price, either above or below. They overlay the price on the chart. They can be based on percentage, statistical measures, volatility, and they'll move with the flow of the price. And we're going to look more particularly into Bollinger Bands, and these are bands that are placed around a moving average at default two standard deviations away. And what does this allow us to see? Well, it allows us to see 95% of the price action and as a general rule prices are thought to be overbought when it hits the top of that band and oversold when it touches the downside. Although as we'll see that's not necessarily the case in all instances but they're a great tool for um, targeting you know maybe as a strategy those band levels.
So here's an example with gold again, a Heiken Ashi chart. So we're now going to add on the Bollinger Bands. And we're also going to add, add on on top of that Bollinger Band Width Indicator. There we go, both are on there. We've got the upper band, lower band, and what we call the basis line, which is that middle moving average period. That's normally set to 20 as default, and the two bands to plus minus two standard deviations. And the bandwidth there tells us how fat or thin the bands are actually going, which can give us a pinch point in price action. Normally can explode out after a narrow range in bandwidth, as we can see in the example there. So you can play around with the inputs into the Bollinger Bands if you want to create a more specific strategy. And we do that by simply going to the settings and the inputs. You know, you might want to up the standard deviations that you're looking at. You might want to expand the length of the moving average and then all of a sudden you've got a completely different look to your Bollinger Band chart. You've got a pinch point there, but like I said, it's up to you the variables you use, but try not to backfit um, the inputs. So we can see how the price bounces around in our new range and how the bandwidth expands and contracts as another measure at all. And here's a typical example of in a longer term how that pinches and then breaks up to a more bullish. Move, but we don't actually know from the Bollinger Band which way it's going to go. We just know that it is going to move, and that's why we'd have to use other indicators along with it to confirm the actual move of the price. So to summarise the Bollinger Bands, that you know they're very good at creating support and resistance levels and you could use maybe the moving average in the middle as a trailing stop level um, they're much better at determining the beginning of a trend and not trading between them and when the bands tighten that can often signify you know an explosion in the movement of the price although we don't know which direction and a little tip there then if you adjust the moving average then it's a good idea to adjust the standard deviations for example a 50 moving average you might want to make the standard standard deviations a bit bigger 2.5 you know a 10 moving average take it down to 1.5 standard deviations so to finish off this section then have a play around with some of those volatility indicators on your charts go through that first point there play around with different markets time frames and see what happens to the price when you know the volatility of those indicators increases and really have a think about the takeaway there and why you think that might be important so let's go back to defining the problem that i briefly touched on in the introduction now it's all about price movement and price volatility you're looking at an instrument to trade whether it be a stock currency pair stock market index future whatever you're expecting I say a big price move but you really don't know in which direction it could be up it could be down you know it's not going to be you know quiet and flat you are expecting anticipating that big move so how do you actually put together a trade that you can benefit from that moves you know possibly in either direction whether that's up or down the solution in fact is very straightforward and we're going to use options to create a low risk high reward trade setup now remember these two factors we are direction neutral ie we don't know which way the price is going to move and we will require price volatility and lots of it to make this strategy trade work 
Now in options world, this strategy does have a name and it is called the straddle. So now let's take a look at how the straddle options trade is put together and the basic things you're going to need to know. We're also going to use payoff diagrams to make this more visually easy to understand. So if you've forgotten what they look like, go back to options theory section and take a look. But when you see them, they'll probably jog your memory. But like I said, I really like using the payoff diagrams because it really helps cement the idea of the strategy. The strategy is made up of two parts. Now you've got to take yourself back to the section on options theory if you're new to options. It is, like I say, very straightforward. Leg one, or part one of the trade, is to buy an at the money strike call option. And leg two, the second part of the trade, is to buy an at the money strike put option. Now you put those two together and you create the straddle strategy. So what does that visually look like? Well, here's leg one we, where we buy the at the money strike call. It's going to benefit if the price moves upwards. We're going to lose if obviously the price doesn't get past our at the money strike and we'll pay the debit cost. Then we add the at the money strike put by buying that. And as you can see, the payoff there, if the price falls, we make money. And if it goes up, we lose money. So what does that look like when added together? Well you notice that V shape, that's the straddle, the red shaded area is where you lose, i.e. the price has not really moved anywhere and we're going to make money, like say, if the price moves substantially in either direction to the upside or downside. So what are the costs of this trade? Well, you're going to be out of pocket because you're buying both the calls and the puts and it can also be an expensive strategy, which we're going to look at more later in this section three. And the straddle, the max risk is obviously what you paid for it. You know, the two parts of the trade, the put and the call. And because we can make money in either direction, the actual max reward is unlimited, you know, to the upside or the downside. So let's see that risk reward a bit more visually here. Again, back to the payoff profile. Green shaded areas are where we make money, the red where we lose money. So again, it's obvious that if the price doesn't move, we don't make money. If it does move, we do make money. And the max risk there is what we have paid for the trade. So where do we break even on the straddle trade? Well, there are two break even points, one to the upside, which is the strike minus the net debit. And the downside is the strike plus the net debit. And what does that look like visually? Well, I've highlighted there with those two yellow stars, the point of break even. So we need that price to move through those stars for us to start making money. So now let's take a look at a real world example. So I've created a hypothetical scenario here for you to try and make you think about the strategy a bit more. So Pfizer, US pharmaceutical company, has a big announcement coming about a new well changing drug. And the company are pinning their hopes on this being a success. Otherwise, they're going to be in a bit of trouble. And the announcement date is a few weeks away and you expect that price of the stock to move a lot but you're not sure in which direction. Now if they announce that their tests have failed you expect the price to drop dramatically but if success with testing and approval is positive then you expect a big price move. Now currently Pfizer is trading at $52.53. The announcement is two weeks away so what do we need to do? We need to buy the at the money calls and puts of the May 2022 $52.50 strike options. Now at time of producing this it's March time and you're wondering why I'm buying those options so far away. We will discuss that 
further on in the course but for the moment all we need to do is focus on the actual structure and you know learning about how to put this trade together so the first question you're going to be asking is well how do you find these options and the relevant options prices and the answer is you've got to go to your broker pull up the option chain and that's the list of strikes by expiry with the associated options and prices for both the puts and calls for whatever stock or instrument you are trying to trade now I went into my broker first trade to find this option chain for Pfizer I typed in the ticker PFE pulled up the chain by the relevant expiry which is the May 20 2022 um, series that you can see highlighted in orange there and then that gives us a list of calls and puts by the strikes and their prices now you can see the 52 and a half call and put pretty much in the middle there and you can see the bid and ask prices we want the ask price because we're buying the puts and calls and literally you would take those two prices add them together and that is the cost of your straddle trade now different brokers do it differently but then you would like take the call and the put and then execute that trade within your broker to create the straddle now I hope you can see then that the cost of that trade is two dollars 89 plus the three dollars 40 equaling six dollars 29 now important here and a lot of people do forget that the actual cost is multiplied by whatever multiplier you're using and in stocks most often it's a hundred so the actual cost of this trade to you will be six hundred and twenty nine dollars now in first trade especially if you're new to option trading you'd like to see what would happen if the price moves up and down by certain amounts or it doesn't move at all what do you make what do you lose well again in first trade and in most brokers you get this type scenario function that allows you to play around and visualize like I say those payoff diagrams so I've put together the Pfizer trade and for the purposes of our scenario here I've assumed that at expiry the price has moved up to $67.61 so what does that look like then visually well there's a lot of information to take away here first of all the payoff profile diagram in the middle left there and to the right of that is telling you the cost of the trade the reward the max risk and the pop there is the probability of this trade actually working so 41.65 percent we're going to talk about that more later break even points which you could calculate yourself 46.21 58.79 dollars remember those star points from the earlier diagram days to expire each 66 now interestingly the PL targets you know if that price got to 67.61 we would make $882, which is an absolutely amazing 140.22% return. So this is the sort of thing you can easily use in your broker to help visualize and see what you can make, what you can lose. And as, like I say, this is a scenario builder, so you can play around with the prices, play around with changing the options and the you know, strikes, that sort of thing. You know, any good broker should offer that now that's our example now it's time to for you to have a go so i've got another scenario for you now you may want to pause you know go back forwards the you know video content in this exercise to get the best from it now our scenario is tesla the us company and elon musk is set to announce a radical new but very costly invention in the next next few weeks and you aren't sure how the market is going to take this now you do know that you know good or bad news is probably going to come out and it's going to move the price a lot now you want to buy a long straddle position the current stock price is $766.65 round it up to $770 for the purpose of this exercise so you want to buy the 20th May 2022 you know straddle position 67 days to expiry and you're going to use the following options chain pricing ladder to answer the questions that I've set that follow the chain ladder next. So here is the option chain ladder and like I say you might want to pause the video now to look at the data. The questions that I've set 
like I say, are after this options chain uh, ladder slide. So four simple questions for you to answer now. So the first one, what is the cost of the May 22 straddle? And at expiration, what is the upside and downside break even levels? Number three, what is the max profit and loss? And if the price went up to $850 at expiration, what would the potential profit or loss be? Now, you should be able to answer those through the content in this section. If you're still struggling, the answers follow this next slide. So here are the answers for number one, the cost is $184.40. Don't forget the multiplier as well. In the real world, you'd times that by a further 100 to get the actual cost due, but the call and the put were $91 and $93.40 respectively. The break even to the upside, question two, it was $954.40 and the downside, $585.60. Max profit is obviously unlimited. The max loss is the debit paid, which, as we know, was the $184.40 from the first question. And finally, we would have lost $104.40 if the price moved to $850, because that's the strike, $770 minus the $850, minus the cost of the trade, gave us that loss of $104.40. Now, it's not the case of just going out trying to find a straddle trade to put on through your broker and then fingers crossed hoping that it's going to make you some money and that's the same for all trading it's not that straightforward otherwise everybody would be doing it and winning so I've put together a formula for the ideal straddle trade and we're going to go through all of these parts in a lot more detail over the next you know sections of the course but there's five key areas that we need to focus on to build up the strategy. Now, remember, this is also quite a bit of a subjective process as well. So I try to make it as objective as possible. But the five um, points that we need to consider, the first is price movement expectations of whatever you're looking at. So we need a reason for it to be moving and that could be from some quantitative statistical methods it could be a feel of uh, what you think is going to happen to some market it could be after a presidential election an event uh, the earning seasons in stocks whatever it is you need to be sure through your uh, trading plan model that this um, part is more than likely going to work and that it's got the chance of you know the price moving to work for the straddle trade now second part is some basic inputs and there's an ideal stock price range to be trading uh, the straddle strategy which we'll look at in a moment and also your required volume and an ideal cost now is the trade worth putting on in the first place then we get on to some other key variables around the execution of the trade you know the ideal entry timing point and the you know time to expiry and the ideal exit levels and then fourth we move on to a whole section on volatility iv is implied volatility and HV historical volatility there's some basic rules that we can apply to improve the odds of success and finally we're looking at technical analysis TA there yeah we're looking for those patterns remember in the earlier section on the basics of technical analysis that are good for this strategy I put in there things like Bollinger Bands that's the BB or the ATR average true range those consolidation patterns remember the price continuation triangles all that sort of stuff add all of that together it's the ideal straddle trade now in the real world of trading it's very hard to um, put all those five pieces together so I like to create like I say an objective process around by giving each of those points a scoring um, number to you know rank whether the opportunity is worth it or not and you could do the same you know score 
each one out of one to five or a percentage level, whatever. Come up with your own scoring system to work out whether your trade is worth it or not. But they're the component parts really that go into the decision making of coming up with, I say, that ideal straddle trade. And we're now going to go through all those parts in a lot more detail before we finally put the trade all together. Now section 3.3 .3 is all about getting into the detail of how to go about selecting the stocks you want to trade and for the record also this process is exactly the same in any other market whether that's FX, you know, commodities, whatever, the process should still be the same. Now I'm going to look at four of the five variables from the formula we looked at in the last section. I'm going to save timing for a bit later. So we're going to dig into those four in a lot more detail now and like I say, paint a picture of how you can start to construct and find the assets that you would like to trade and also assets that give you the best chance of success. Now this is where the strategy really does start. You've got to answer one question and that is why is the price of whatever you're looking at or wanting to look at to trade going to move substantially either up or down? Is it based on just a gut feel or are you using some quantitative statistical research? For example, you know that every time the price falls by X, it bounces back and does this, or it continues down to that, you know, or is it based on pure technical analysis? Are you using Bollinger Bands price patterns and you know if it breaks out of a certain setup, it moves a certain percentage? Or is it, and this is probably the more uh, popular um, reasons for trading uh, straddles, is that it's based on an event or fundamental knowledge of an asset and we're going to dig into that last point now. Now like I said events are the most popular and probably the easiest way to build the straddle strategy into your trading. Now the event could be you know commodities, you could be trading commodities uh, futures you know in whatever market it is and it could be the reason of inventories, it could be warehousing numbers, it could be transportation, it could even be weather like hurricanes for example, in currencies FX, it could be scheduled economic events like interest rate decisions or a general election, a president or, you know, an unexpected potential um, politician gets into, you know, the leadership. It could be in stocks, product announcements, Apple, are they launching a new phone, aren't they? Hiring, firing of key staff members and the most popular really for this type of strategy is earnings and it could also be based on other stuff war conflict whatever you think is going to move that price quite substantially in either direction and you can model it and then apply it into the straddle format then that classes as a reason to trade like i just mentioned earnings season is probably one of the most popular ways of using the straddle option strategy in stocks. So what is earning season? Well it's a time each quarter in a year when these publicly traded companies report their earnings, you know, how successful or how badly they've done over the last quarter and this can give those participants in the market a big clue as to how they're going to perform going forward. So often uh, this information is translated into big stock moves either to the upside or the downside disappointment or you know that extra overperformance that they see happening to the stock in the near future is priced in almost automatically around these events and this is what we are looking for in our straddle strategy how can you find out when companies are announcing their earnings? Well, you just have to Google that and there are countless websites, mostly free, that will publish this information for you. I just did a quick search and found investing.com filtered for the week ahead. 
sorry, the next week and found that you know we've got Nike, Adobe, you know, some decent companies there reporting next week. So like I said the information is out there for you to start building into your overall straddle strategy. So a tip when finding your reason to trade then whatever you've found that you know perked your interest you know it can be a subjective um, process and we want to take that subjectivity out we want to make it as objective and as systematic as possible because we want to turn this into a strategy that we can roll out time and time again and we've got to back up any assumption or idea that we have with some sort of empirical research evidence does that price of whatever you're looking at actually move like we want it to and we will see shortly how we can turn the whole process a lot more objective and finally a very quick exercise for you to get you thinking about you know reasons to trade the straddle you know make a list of the markets that you trade and then list down events you know make the price volatile in either direction up or down then start to formulate this information into your trading plan and the straddle strategy. Now, we will um, go into the trading plan right at the end of the course, and there's some guides and tools for you to use there if you're new to building a trading plan that you can use. But for the moment, you know, just think about how you know you're going to go around finding these events, these price potential movements get them listed and start thinking how you would possibly trade them first of all we need to apply some filters to three variables that's around price volume and cost and why is that well we want to increase or improve the probability of success in this strategy so our first variable is this stock price range now, I like to trade stocks between $25 and $75. Why is that? Well, think about the strategy. We're looking also for potential downside movement. So if the number is too low at the bottom, there's not that much room for it to move down and make us the money we want. So I start at $25. And I don't go above $75 because the strategy, as you might come to see, can be an expensive one. And... I find it harder to manage over that $75 mark. So between that, there's plenty of action to be had. And I think it's just an easier um, setup if you are in between that range. But the tip there is to find the price range that you're comfortable with. You don't have to use this rule. You might be just focusing on one stock, maybe like our Tesla example, that's you know over $700, then you know, that could be your strategy. So this is just a guide if you're going to be trading straddles a lot then I like to use a price range filter then we have volume well when you do these trades you will need to be able to get in and out quite nimbly you don't want to get stuck in a stock that isn't trading you know you're gonna have slippage and it's gonna be costly to your position and those small stocks don't allow you to do the trading you know as you know liquid as you might like to so you have to be careful there so my rule of thumb here is I look for stocks with a 20-day average volume of greater than 500,000 and thirdly we've got to think about the cost of the actual trade is it worth putting on that straddle strategy Are the cost of the puts and the calls too expensive versus what you know the price could potentially do and it's often overlooked variable you know we've got to really ascertain is it worth you know trading will it make that break even you know point now also going back to the second point there on volume less liquid stocks as well have a wider spread cost you know and why we need to set up this filter process because again they can get you stuck in a trade you might want to get out of quickly so I've got a rule here for you 
quite important one and it's a way of ascertaining whether the straddle's worth doing there's other ways you can do it but this is a quick simple way you take the high and low of the asset you want to trade and say our expiry is two months away then we would look at the last two months of price history for whatever asset we were looking at to get that high and low range then we take the straddle price of the asset we want to trade and we compare that to that historical price range and we're looking for the option straddle price to be less than 50% of that high to low range if it's greater than that it's you know a stock you might want to think twice about actually trading now we did look at a Tesla uh, straddle strategy idea in 3.1 and that had a cost of $184.40 but the price range over the high and low was $516 so that's substantially less than the 50% so there's a big tick there. The takeaway here is really it's not a hard and fast rule but it can certainly help you know showing you that there's potential in that trade idea. So an exercise to round this section off, you know, if you want to look at trades using the straddle, then consider you know price ranges you'll be comfortable trading. You might be just wanting to trade individual stocks, and if so, then that's irrelevant. But when you're looking at whatever you want to trade, factor in the volume. Has it got enough to you know, get you in and out of that trade easily? And take a look back at the Pfizer example we did in 3.1 and have a look at the Pfizer charts if you can do and compare that straddle price to the price range and see whether it was worth trading or not. Now the whole premise, the ideal scenario behind this strategy, the straddle strategy, is that we want to move from a low volatility environment to a high volatility environment rather quickly so that means we need to look at volatility in a bit more detail and there's two ways of doing that we're going to look the first way implied volatility versus historical volatility then implied volatility versus implied volatility and we're going to lay out now the rules behind those two what we're looking actually from both these rules is breathing room for current situation to be able to increase substantially in volatility so it's no good if you know the volatility is trading at all-time record highs versus its historical or even historical implied volatility so we're going to filter out on two rules like I said the first one is implied volatility versus historical volatility so it's the implied today versus the historical over a longer period of time I normally take three months, but you could range this between one to six, six depending on your strategy. But the results that we are looking for is that the implied volatility has got to be a lot less than the historical volatility. Then the second rule is very similar, other than we are replacing historical volatility with implied volatility. So we're looking at today's implied vol versus the historical longer term implied vol same sort of period of time and again we want the implied volatility of today to be less than that longer term implied volatility and just a note there that the um, latter the implied vol versus the implied vol carries more weight than the first rule so you can just use number two if you like but I try to use both where possible and how could you do this? Well, it's about filtering out data. You might have this information in your charting package. There's a lot of free resource and some paid that you'll find on the website out there. And we will look in more detail at these tools on 3.3.4. But as an example, from one of these providers, I downloaded some data into Excel and filtered on these rules, plus the rules of volume and price range that we came up with in the earlier analysis and from all the stocks out there at the moment it filtered it down to a handful and from that handful there were some interesting ones that might you know 
perk up my attention so let's just have a quick look at that list you can see from creating filter how it can help you find the um, stocks that you're interested in and two I've highlighted in yellow there are because if you go to column G you can see the implied volatility say that first one US ecology implied vol of 11% but then have a look at the three month implied vol 50% and then if you go to the historical 90 day vol it's at 91% so there's some potential upside explosion moves there then you would tie all of that lot in with the other filters that we've seen and are going to see to create the optimal chance of success in your straddle trading strategy. So this is quite a neat trick. You want to calculate the potential for say a stock price to move as it approaches an event that you've highlighted then you can quite simply do this by following the rules laid out here it's a back of cigarette packet type way there are some mathematical ways of doing it but this is really straightforward and simple all you need to do is find the at the money straddle for the stock you're looking at and the important bit here is to put the expiry of that as close to the event date you know whether it's earnings or product release whatever or as close as you can to that date and then find out what the cost of that at the money straddle is and then all you have to do is divide that cost by the current stock price to get the plus minus percentage move that the market thinks is going to happen up to that date so it's really easy to get the implied move based on the options so we'll take a look at a hypothetical example and it'll make it all make total sense so we're looking at stock ABC Inc current stock price is $100 now the $100 at the money call for the scenario we're looking at it's about a week away is the call is worth six dollars and the put is worth five dollars fifty now together the straddle will cost us eleven dollars fifty so that means the implied move up to our um, you know expiry uh, event date can mean that the price can move in a range to the upside of 111.50 and the downside of 89.50 now if you want to work out what that is in percentage terms you just take that price of 11.50 and divide it by the current stock price there $100 and you get that plus minus 12% move so a really nice straightforward way to calculate your know, implied move of the underlying stock an exercise to wrap things up on this section here get familiar with calculating the implied price move it is a useful tool especially when you're considering trades find some stocks options you'd like to trade and go through the same process as we've just done with you know our hypothetical stock ABC Inc and you're probably going to find this information from within your broker and you know play around see what moves that can be possible and what do you notice from them does it mean that you know, these ideas that you have have got legs and that they've got the potential for big price movement technical analysis is another key component of the ultimate ideal straddle strategy setup and if you remember from section 2.2 we looked at five key tools we're just going to go through them you know with some obvious examples in this section because you've got to start thinking how you're going to add technical analysis and it is like I say, a very useful tool um, to use for this type of strategy into your trading plan so with that let's firstly look at price consolidation patterns so I'm just going to run through the patterns quickly the bullish and the bearish consolidation patterns now these are ones that you can see are bullish they're to the upside notice how we use volume 
by date at the bottom here to confirm the breakout you not often see a big spike in volume but have a look at the symmetrical one notice how the price squeezes down inside that triangle that's a volatility getting less and less and because it's getting coiled up it needs to explode and we can actually use um, that pattern as a potential target you take a and b and add it into c and d and similar story with the ascending bullish triangle pattern as well so another bullish set of patterns the flag and the pennant works the same way as the others volume spikes on the breakout look how between those red lines the price is consolidating and then spikes and breaks out you can use the flagpole as a potential measuring stick for the price move from the breakout Lastly, we have the falling wedge pattern. Same story, breaks out, off it shoots. And just an example of it in practice, you can see here we're looking at Alibaba, ticker BABA. You can trade it in the US, Chinese, mega, Amazon rival. You can see those patterns, those triangles, and the price breaking out and the volume also spiking as they do another example just using the swiss stock market showing you the example using a um, flag type setup and how it breaks out and the use of the flagpole to give you a potential target area Some bearish patterns, the descending triangle and the broadening, almost like a megaphone type setup. Again, look for the volume on the breakout. And then we have the rising wedge trends down and then that consolidation pattern in between the two red lines there, and then it shoots off downwards. So back to our peloton example right from the very beginning in section one the introduction there's that big earnings drop around november time just look at that nice descending wedge pattern that was building up ripe for an explosion downwards now also got to mention that although i've been quite directional with these patterns you know bullish triangle patterns bearish triangle patterns doesn't necessarily mean they're going to explode in that direction what we're looking for and what's important is that consolidation of volatility and the explosive breakout afterwards so that's why i would put indicators other use other indicators together um, on top of the uh, triangle patterns to ascertain the direction maybe something like an rsi macd stochastic up to you how you want to build it like I say, the, these, um, or all of these volatility type indicators are very good at spotting the um, general change in you know, the levels of volatility, but they're not very good at calling the general direction. And like I say, for the purpose of this strategy, we really just want to be seeing that consolidation. Like we said, we don't really care about the direction. We want to see that volatility getting squeezed for the potential of the big blowout. Moving on to Bollinger Bands, I've also added something on called Bandwidth. Now notice the blue arrows, um, they're around the pink descending triangle wedge that we looked at. The, the blue lines around it are the Bollinger Bands and they're set to the standard two to standard deviation setup notice how they dip inwards as you know the price with inside those you know, triangle patterns contract so it's just another tool to show you that you know the volatility is falling out of the market and look down the bottom there that's the bandwidth that just measures the gap between the upper and lower bands you can see that dropping as well and then we have the earnings event and see the huge spike up in the bandwidth and the two Bollinger bands as like I say the earnings season plays out 
So I've now replaced the Bollinger Bands with the ATR, that's the average true range. It's going to give you a similar sort of um, analysis a result to the Bollinger Bands. Again, it's down the bottom there. I've drawn a trend line and you can use that as well. Or you can add other indicators on top of the ATR to give you the warning of potential move in this you know, underlying numbers. And you can see as that pink line is broken, the volatility, the average true range shot up. And how do you read that? Well, at the time of the break, it was just under $4 per day move. That shot up to over 6 very quickly. And we can, like I say, use the ATR, the Bollinger Bands, the triangles to give us a good idea of, like I say, the contraction of the volatility. Volume up price is a great little tool for finding where the price could potentially go to. Now, I've switched here to Amazon. We were looking at Peloton previously. And on the right hand side is the volume at price. Remember, it's now looking at price, not the day, which is the traditional, well, you know, the time period, which is a traditional setup for volume. So we can see what price levels, you know, the volume has been traded most heavily at. And what I look for is those dips where I've highlighted with the red lines, curved lines, and the blue arrows, because what you often see is where there's a lot of action through to the other side where there's not a lot of action the price moves very quickly because there's nothing happening there no one wants to trade there so often around an earnings event you can see a big drop moving price through like I said those different levels of you know volume at price so it's another good tool for estimating um, potential target areas and on here on Amazon you've got to the upside at the at the money sort of area you've got 10% upside to that heavier volume area and then downside you've got a 15% move so then you factor that into your other analysis around can the price move that far imply volatility that sort of thing and you start to piece together whether it's worth doing the trade or not finally got the fifth element which is Fibonacci now I've just found the high and the low and put those lines on it's really simple to use and again it's going to give you potential support and resistance target points now again from the current at the money price in the shorter term you've got a plus 13 percent minus seven percent sort of range and even further still the next sort of set is up 27 percent down nearly 18 percent so if we had an earnings um, period just around the corner and you know it's either very good or very bad for Amazon then you could expect the price to move nicely towards those sort of areas so another use for a technical analysis tool for our straddle strategy so one of the big problems with technical analysis it can be quite subjective but I try to do give you the tools to make it as objective as possible. Now you don't have to use all of these. You can use some of them. You know, you might have others that you want to use that you know, aren't even here. Totally up to you. But you know the big takeaway from this technical analysis section is how one, two and three can help you see visually quite quickly price consolidation zones which we're key to find and look for for the straddle strategy and also four and five um, you know the volume and the Fibonacci how they can help you find potential price targets and see where or whether the actual trade has any legs any potential to possibly move dramatically around a particular event exercise for you then around technical analysis this is all about just getting experience using the different five technical analysis tools we've looked at if you've got the charting package there already or whatever one you use put them on your charts around different time frames and markets different stocks whatever you want to look at have a play get familiar with them see what happens to the price when we find these consolidation zones work out you know 
potential price moves do some dummy testing around there and get familiar like I say with these tools and decide you know what you're going to use and add them in to your trading plan so this section is all about making your life and trading life more productive now we're going to look at some scanning and filtering tools out there and this is going to help make your strategy more systematic and more objective now there's loads out there to find free ones paid for ones um, but I suppose the whole purpose of this is to allow you to process more data and create more opportunity more efficiently and in the end make you more profitable so I'm going to take a look at some examples that I've come across and some that I use that may just help you but just remember there are loads out there you know you can find your own you don't have to use these like I said do a bit of research and like I said there's an awful amount of stuff out there that can help you in your strategy first up we've got a site called investing.com completely free got a lot of great resource information here for you but we're interested in the earnings so we click on markets we go under stocks you see all these different things you can use the site for but there's the earnings calendar tab click on that and then apart from you can find other stuff like holidays dividends you know the economic calendar explorations of futures we can actually create a filter uh, around the earnings so if we click next week what's happening next week we can see we've got Nike you know Adobe General Mills some good stocks there to potentially look for straddle trades on so that's investing.com now this next site is called Wall Street odds.com and it is a great tool for those interested in the statistical quantitative side of how prices move it goes back many many years in terms of data scans for price moves over minutes hours days weeks years and then looks at what's historically happened to the price after that so that in itself is a very good tool and it gives you the probability the odds of success of that move happening again but we're interested in earnings for this uh, tool and I've created a filter here that looks for um, earnings over the next 20 days it's looking for stocks between 4 billion and 100 billion market cap a price between 20 and 80 dollars and only includes stocks with options and it's produced a nice short list here quite a few to look at and let's have a look at this one you click on it chewy brings up this page you can see a lot of data about price movement history it's got some sentiment stuff in there as well odds of price movement seasonality social sentiment but here we've got earnings and look at that it tells you there's a video on how to use the tab but it actually shows you the price moves after the earnings announcements day after week after you know was it good bad you know event and you can use this information along with what we've learned on the rest of the course to see whether you know this trade is actually worth doing on Chewy. Does it actually move after earnings season? You know, it's, this is a sort of data that can really seriously help your trading. So that's WallStreetOdds.com. Now, BarChart.com is one that I personally use, and it's really good for creating um, filters and analysing data it's good for stocks options futures currencies it's got a lot of data in there and a lot of it is downloadable you can API into it as well to create an even more systematic process if you're good at the programming side now just here I've set up my own stock filter around the rules of the straddle trade so I've got some mid to large range stocks I'm looking a period sort of over the next 20 days I'm looking for stocks between 25 and 75 dollars volume greater than 500,000 on average and then I've pulled back the different volatility inputs implied and historical you check the results and that's brought us back 13 trades or well, possible trades and from there you can you know do the analysis look at the volatility comparisons 
see what industries they are, filter on the industries. You might be looking at the bigger picture and looking for, say, particularly tech stocks and then focusing on there. And if you want to download that data, you just click the button there and it sends it all into a CSV file that you can then play with. Now under the options tab, we've got a few things we can use here. We've got information around implied volatility, active options, unusual activity, highest implied vol, change in volatility. And again, you can set up your own filters around here, but they've also got you know optionable stocks with upcoming earnings. Click on there and you can again change the period. So you can say the next 21 days and it's going to give you a complete list. Ours was more filtered, but you know, I think this is available on the free version. Again, this is paid for at all free, and I think this one's available on the free. Um, but like I say, another very useful quick fire tool. And another great feature is if you really want to go straight to the kill and use someone else's analysis for uh, straddle opportunities, again on the options tab, click on there. They actually do have suggestions and ideas around different types of options strategy. We're talking about the long straddle. So we click on there and it's going to bring us up a list, 38 possible um, potential trades. It gives you an idea of what, what the strategy is about there. There's a webinar you can watch to understand a bit more about it, but also gives you the probability of success of these trade ideas. You can see the break even points calculated, all the things we've looked at um, in the course so far, the, the strike prices, you know, the legs that you want to look at. Again, you can download all that data, you can move it around, find the most likely to succeed at the moment. It says here Apple, the 157 and a half strike. It's going to cost you $4.18. It's got a 44% chance of winning. So maybe you could create rules around the probability of success and it does go into more detail about how it's calculated these numbers behind the scenes. But bar chart, a very useful tool to use. Now your broker probably gives you a lot of tools to play with as well. Now my broker's first trade and they've got something called options play where you can construct your own strategies. It's pretty straightforward um, and also very good for beginners as well uh, in options trading world. You can select your type of strategy and we want the straddle strategy and we can filter different you know, expiry dates, strike prices you know, and we come out with a premium and you can see here is the outcome of our straddle and it's got a scoring strategy so red 51 would be low and poor you're looking for the green scores and it tells us the cost of the trade and why you want to trade it we can just click on there, it tells us the data behind it, 44 days to expire. Like so you can change all of that lot. We can also filter the um, price range, that you know, the expected probability of the price moving. And if we think it's actually going to be quite a wide move, see how that changes the performance of the, uh, the strategy straddle trade here. So if you're confident there's a price move, then yeah, maybe this now is one for you to play. And you've got other variables you can put in there, how much you want to invest on the trade. It tells you about the trade there. And like I said, you can then start to play around with the price, the expiry, the volatility numbers. So if volatility increased and the price increased, you can see the size of the return, 102% return if the price gets up to $60, which isn't that far away really for a stock like Altria that we're looking at here now. And factor that in with the other variables that we've looked at, you know, the reason for that potential price move around earnings season, then, you know, you've got a powerful little tool here. And if you want to find out more about the trade, you can just click on there, brings it up. And we've got the probability of profit, 40%. So reasonably low, but again, you can, uh, you know, set your own boundaries and rules around there. So you could have a strategy. You find your stocks, you come in here, so well, if the probability of profits over X percent, I'm going to trade it. But it gives you a lot more detail. You know, the expected profit, expected return, target price, you know, strategy 
checklist tick box for you actually not so good on spread and liquidity so another factor you know we have talked about um, that you might want to consider and then you can get say you know change the tickers in here and find different stocks it's also got some technical analysis to support it you know it's telling you it's mildly bearish in the short term bullish in the medium term so like I say most brokers should offer you this sort of support and tools to help you in options trading trading generally and for our purposes the straddle strategy now lastly let's not forget you know technical analysis today's software you can do a real load of automation on the packages that you have now I'm using TradingView here but other ones like Bloomberg CQG eSignal yeah, there's a lot of optionality you can add on to help you know scan for stuff in TradingView for example you can even create your own strategies and you know do they even have their own coding language and you can also access into the data pull it back and do your own analysis if you're good at programming but we're just looking at something really simple here for those that aren't as you know computer program minded as others and here I'm looking at Amazon and I've just applied something called a weekly auto fib extension on it so I don't even have to draw the Fibonacci's it's got a 50 period that, um, look back and you can see how it creates the potential target lines for me it looks like it's doing a pretty decent job on Amazon here and you can change the inputs colors look backs to suit your strategy or we could for example you know we looked at Bollinger Bands we can add those on and the beauty of this um, setup and trading view is you can click on the indicator that you're looking at and add alerts onto them to warn you that something is happening and you can set a whole load of variables you could add on the bandwidth to let you know that it's moving you know, more aggressively upwards you just set that and it'll ping you an email uh, SMS to your phone you know a flash up on the screen a noise and what you could do for example is go to bar charts download the stock tickers um, that you're interested in add them to say a watch list like I've got here and then all you have to do is just keep clicking through and watching you know the results happening again saving you a lot of time in drawing and analysis so there's just some ideas for you like I said there's a lot more out there and you're going to discover a lot more you might probably know some that I don't know factor them into your trading plan like I say create a process that is systematic and as objective as possible when using these tools We're now going to look at how to manage the straddle options trade and that's going to bring us nicely around to the last element of the you know, ideal formula for the straddle you know, strategy trade that we looked at much earlier on in the course. That fifth element that's missing is timing and three parts of timing need to be addressed. Timing of getting into the trade, timing around the expiry of the options and timing of exiting the trade and after looking briefly at that we're going to take a look at what is known as the Greeks the risks of this strategy and highlight some of the pitfalls and danger areas for you to look out for so with that let's dig into this section So this and the next section are very important for the trade management of the position and the success and outcome of your straddle trade. And it's really important that you understand fully you know, the getting in and getting out parts. Now we're going to look at two timing elements in this section, which is the getting in, like I say, and getting out timing parts. And then in the next section, we're going to look at the timing of the expiration and the risks and why that is important but first of all 
we've got to get into the trade so we've gone through the step-by-step -step process you know you've formulated your selection process around you know, price movement expectations for example you might be looking at earnings season you've gone through all those variables that we touched on in the you know the ideal trade scenario price range volume implied and historical volatility technical analysis to maybe refine and create a short list of trades or maybe just either rule in or out one that you were potentially looking at trading and basically done all the due diligence and you're now ready to execute so what do you do and this is important to take in you buy and at the money with the same expiry put and call position now the important bit here and we will explain this more in 3.4.2 the Greek section why we actually do it but we want the actual options expiry position to be at least two to three months away now that might seem a long time but there is a very very good reason for it getting into the trace body the easy bit you know managing it to the finish line getting out of it's probably the harder part of it so we've got various ways we can do that and I've listed them out here so if event X whatever for you know the thing you're trading the you know could be the earnings season you've gone through they've announced the results and actually nothing happens the price stays where it is get out of the position within at least five days secondly if the event does happen and the underlying price of whatever you're trading you know the stock for example does move substantially then again you've got some different options so the first one here a is if the price increases you could sell the call at a profit and leave the put where it is because you know, it's going to be worthless and potentially when you see these big price moves and it's worth you know maybe back testing this if you can you know the price does often fall back quite he heavily so as it does the value of the put will regain some momentum so you can either leave it on to you know turn to profit or you, know, you can use it as a you know risk mitigator and you know lessen the loss on the position that you would have possibly had so we've also got the vice versa situation here so if the price of x does decrease dramatically then we can sell the put and leave the call and we would do the opposite to a and then thirdly if it's in your strategy and your rules to get out completely on a significant move you might want to free up capital for example then you know do so as soon as possible you might be targeting Fibonacci lines using technical analysis as your rule now a little tip there I don't like fixed targets so much trading manually as they very rarely play out for example you might say oh, I want a 10% move you sit there and it gets to 7% and then all of a sudden the market moves back and you're only in 2% profit you know and you're really you know scratching your head what you should have done there so what I do if I'm doing manually is I set a percentage of the profit you know initial profit target you know it could be like 66% two thirds and then if it's hit that sort of zone you know and you know I'm factoring in time as well of holding the trade then I'm probably going to exit at, you know a slightly reduced profit but at least it's a profit now this last bit is so so important you've got to do this do not hold that straddle position into the last month because time decay theta which we will see in the next section is very very costly to you you know during that last month of the options life and we will find out why that is in a moment so the rule is close the position when it gets there do not do anything else so like it says there that brings us nicely on to explaining that in a bit more detail along with some of the other risks involved with holding this type of position so we've covered off the timing part of getting in and out of the straddle trade but what about the timing of the options expiration I've been mentioning that a lot along with the associated Greek risks of the straddle position but before we get into that we need a brief lesson on what the Greeks actually are now you've already come across one of them in section 2.1 that is Delta but there's three other key ones 
we really need to know about gamma vega and theta there are others but they're beyond this course ones like rho vanna and volga don't be intimidated by them they are easier to understand than you may think now the greeks are a set of tools to calculate and measure the different component parts i.e., the risks of the options trade or portfolio of options trades you have on and they really do aid decision making help you massively in the risk management side and as well coming up with new strategy design ideas because options are so flexible you can create point of views around almost any direction going so let's dig into a bit more on the key for it for uh, greeks we need to look at first delta like i said we've seen that already it's just how much an options price can be expected to move for every one dollar change in the price of the underlying so a delta of 0.75 means that the options price will theoretically move 0.75 for every one dollar change in the underlying now the higher the delta the bigger the price change and once you get to one delta then you're basically trading the underlying so gamma measures the rate of change in an options delta over time so gamma is the rate of change in options delta per one dollar change in the price of the underlying stock so for example if the delta moves from 0.75 to 0.85 become small in the money then the uh, change is 0.1 and that is the options gamma now vega that's what this strategy is all about think of vega as volatility and it measures the rate of change in an options price per one percent change in the implied volatility of the underlying stock so a fall in vega can cause both calls and puts to lose value and an increase in vega can make them gain value finally theta now think of options positions if you buy them they're going to cost you to hold them and they're going to cost you even more as you get closer to expiry the costs do pick up you know options are a wasting asset like i say if you buy them important to remember and that's why um, it's very important for the straddle position and you know this theta is going to tell us exactly how much price of the option should decrease each day as the option nears expiration if all the other factors remain the same and it's also known theta as time decay so that's why we give the straddle two to three months of time to live because if we put on a two week option straddle you know expiry it would be massively costly and detrimental to the position so we must keep it yeah, you know, that expiry, you know, for a significant period of time. And remember that rule, don't let it go into that last month because the costs, you know, exponentially pick up during that period. So now let's look how our options straddle position changes over time, because that's the important part of this subject, you know, section timing. And I've created a hypothetical example. We've got an underlying stock, say, at $150. The days to expiration are 60. Our implied volatility is at 30%, and the at the money straddle is at 150. Now, our idea from you know our research is that we've got an event, an earnings event happening in about two weeks. So we've given the position, you know, long enough expiry, and we need to see visually how those Greeks gonna change and I'm gonna look at 60 days to expiry 30 days and then one day to expiry and using the payoff type profile charts makes it a lot more visual and you can start to understand how the Greeks change over time so let's start with Delta um, we're gonna move from left to right on those charts you can see there left one is 60 days and 30 in the middle then one day to expiry on the right hand side now day delta yeah is at its greatest when this position is making money now it's as you can see positive one right at the top and negative one right at the bottom that's just indicating the direction 
of the trade but as you can see if it makes money the delta obviously gets bigger and gamma same thing 60 days 30 days one day left to right the takeaway here is notice how it's at its greatest around the strike price and that's sort of illustrating you know where the fastest rate of trade change of this position is around the, at the money now Vega is what this strategy is all about I volatility notice how you know it's highest again around the strike and that's because the price hasn't moved yet but notice also from the you know y axis on those charts the change in the values as the you know expiry lessens down to the one day we have you know good vega you know 60 days out around the strike nearly 0.5 by the time we get to expiry it's down to 0.06 so theta now this is an important part of the strategy and why we have that longer expiration date track from the 60 day down to the one day from left to right and notice how the um, theta is most expensive around the strike price but just have a look how costly it gets by you know, one day to expiry we've got a figure of nearly minus one there compared to minus 0.12 60 days out so as time decays erodes this strategy is going to cost you a lot of money and like I say it's hence why we've got that longer expiration date so to summarize this part on the risks and the Greeks our straddle position is Delta neutral because we've bought a call which is positive Delta and bought a put which is negative Delta so they net each other out so the two Greeks we most need to focus on for this strategy are Vega volatility and we need a lot of it to make the money and we've got to manage our position correctly through the expiration so time decay costs i.e. theta doesn't bite us and cost us a lot of money so it's important to put these into your trading plan and you're wondering where you can find these Greek risks so your broker should have this sort of information there's charting packages and software companies that also do this sort of stuff you know if you're mathematically inclined it's very easy to um, put this into an excel spreadsheet also to work out the numbers but like i say your broker should be your probably first point of call and like i said we've looked at examples where we can see how the position plays out have a look into your platform and play around with a few examples and see you know, how the different risk types affect your position so a very quick one on trading other markets what do I mean by trading other markets well we focused a lot of the time on stocks but the straddle strategy works just as well on commodities futures FX cryptocurrencies you know the lot and I want to emphasize it's pretty much the same process that we've gone through the same rules the same techniques the same tools and you know have a look at those markets and see whether the straddle strategy works there there's a lot of event driven stuff that can work in those areas now your normal stockbroker probably is not going to have those type of assets available to you so probably going to have to search around for a different broker probably one that specializes in forex or futures probably be your best bet but like I say I want to emphasize that the straddle strategy works beautifully well across all sorts of markets and the process that I've highlighted here can be easily applied across those other markets we you know just minor tweaks and you'll see that it works very well there as well so this section is about putting everything we've learned together and you know actually getting to move towards putting straddle trades on for real now we've covered a lot of the basic process and you've now probably starting to formulate a reason to trade the straddle 
you know how to carry out and formulate the due diligence process behind that and you then enter the trade according to the rules and then you formulated an exit plan but we also need to build a test plan into this as well now if you're good at the programming coding you can download data sets then you can back test this sort of data to show that you've got a statistical edge gives you more confidence in the trade if you can't I suggest you know doing live trades but minimize the trade size and pick up that you know information as you go along the way and learn from the actual trades and give yourself say a period of three months of um, this sort of live testing and then once you're confident in your skills and strategy then scale up the size of the trade but before all of that though you really do need to formulate your trading plan you've got to make that plan systematic objective consistent and measurable without a trading plan you you know really just trading with your fingers crossed and hoping that you're going to win we need a executable well defined plan for this type of trading options can be nasty can get messy so we want to take that out by having like I say that systematic consistent process that we follow and that also you know gives us the chance to measure what we're doing a lot more easy if we're consistent in the trades we put on whether win or winning or losing we can see the strengths and weaknesses and where we're making mistakes and how we can remedy that and improve our strategy so what could a basic you know trading plan look like well this is totally hypothetical and I've made it up off the top of my head but hopefully it will give you some sort of idea we're gonna start the trading plan with a mental model and that's the idea behind our strategy and in this example we're going to be trading US stock earnings announcements using the straddle strategy I'm going to run a filter on bar chart to produce a short list of possible trades that could arise over the next 20 days I'm going to transfer that short list to trading view to you know check out whether there's you know the technical analysis happening there you know remember we're looking for consolidation patterns and then I'm going to also look at Wall Street odds to see how historically my shortlisted trades have moved over time. Once I'm happy with that initial process, I've done my due diligence, which is essentially parts one and two of the basic process that we've looked at. I'm going to execute the trade. And the trade execution details, well, through my analysis, my back testing, I've discovered that the best time to put on the trade is seven working days before the earnings announcement. And on that date, I'm going to put on an at the money put and call position with the same expiry with at least a two month expiration date. Now, how am I going to get out the trade? Well, the trade exit details, if it's a positive movement, I'm going to uh, look to take at least 66% uh, of my initial target within the first two days after the event and if the profit is less than this I'm going to close the profitable options leg and leave the non-profitable one to run to see if I can reduce or minimize the risk on that leg of the trade and if the event does not happen at all it stays static the price I'm going to exit within five days of the event the whole position and I'm definitely not going to hold the trade into the final month of expiry because we've seen that through the theta costs and finally performance measurement it's not just about putting on the trade getting out of the trade we want to see over a period of time whether we are doing the right things we're getting that we've got an edge you know an edge being you know statistical you know balance of the probabilities in our favor when we put this trade on and I'm going to analyze my data put it all down into a spreadsheet at least once a week and to produce you know analysis like risk return numbers win loss ratios etc so I can put together a picture to see whether the strategy is working or not find out its strengths and weaknesses and churn that cycle so I can get the best possible strategy using straddles that I can like I say that really is just a hypothetical example there 
probably no substance to it well there might be maybe something somebody wants to test that but um i hope you get the idea where i'm trying to come from you've got to like make this a plan treat it like a business always seeking to analyze and improve it's not just a case of putting the trade on and getting lucky you will fail in the long run you might win one or two but in the long run it's going to cost you so let's finish off with looking at an example from start to finish in the next section so let's finish this section up by just going through a typical hypothetical example of the straddle strategy covering off the process from the formulation going through the basic steps of doing the due diligence through to pressing the fire button and putting the trade on so for this example remember I'm focusing on earnings and I've gone to bar chart and I've created a screener from scratch and we just run through the variables that I've put in it I've put in an earnings date watch so it gives me all well it'll pull back all um, earnings dates between literally seven days to say 24 days out I want stocks that have options obviously the last price between our range that's my comfortable level 25 to 75 dollars market cap mid to large stock so it's probably going to give me the liquidity I need and I've just double checked that with the 20 day average volume set at 500,000 then I've pulled back the implied volatility over different periods and then the historical volatility I hit the see results button it gives me a list of 15 stocks now you know the actual results in this list aren't great and you shouldn't force yourself to put on a trade make sure it you know does hit your variables inside your trading plan but for the purposes of this example I'm gonna probably force my way through a trade now looking at this data here looking just at the maybe the implied volatility versus historical implied volatility not that great like I said maybe a bit better against historical volatility but that has its weaknesses but what we can see here is that we've got AR at the top here that's the ticker 57% versus 81 so we could still have some upside there and this one here HTHT currently 93 it's historical 147 so that looks a volatile old stock so we're going to take those two and I'm going to have a look in um, Wall Street odds to see what historically they've done around earning season and we've got the earning date so we've got a few days left to potentially put these trades on as well so over to Wall Street odds we've got HTHT here click the earnings button historically we've got one day moves minus 10% minus 7% plus 8% plus nearly 10% again and over the following week so not too bad pretty reasonable and then if we check our AER we type that into the system there is air cap holdings NV click on that again to the earnings tab what have we got last few have been reasonably quiet but you know we've got plus eight percent plus eight percent minus eight nearly nine percent and then the week after plus six plus nearly seven plus six plus ten plus twenty one so yeah minus six last time out so it's not too bad so with that I'm going to take those two stocks over to the charts to see what's going on there so i've actually created a short list you can see the two tickers there AER and HTHT and in front of us we have AER air cap holdings and actually looks pretty decent on the chart we've got the consolidation in the price we've got the volume at price as well then we can see that big scoop so we've got some good downside potential there we've got the auto Fibonacci's on as well so we've got two potential sort of downsides of 38% nearly and 17% upsides of nearly 7 and just over 17% so looking pretty decent for um, air cap well HTHT not looking quite as good we haven't really got the consolidation I was looking for volume a bit sporadic potentially got some um, 
room in the Fibonacci's but there's a lot of buffering noise of the different levels so if I was forced to pick one out of the two I'm going to pick AER so I'm now going to take that through to my broker so you join me inside the broker first trade in their options play tool I've typed in AR already, air cap holdings, telling me technically from their analysis it's bearish in the short and medium term. Now we want the straddle trade, so go to the last tab there. And we want the at the money, remember? So it's at 53.17 at the moment, the price. So the closest strike I could find was the 52 and a half, then was the 55, and we went for the 52 and a half. Now, expiry dates, there's not many of them here. It's not a massively traded uh, stock in terms of the options world so it doesn't have the availability like some others so you might have to factor that into your trading plan 121 days a bit long for me I probably wouldn't do it normally but for this example I will put it through and we can see here it's actually got a pretty decent option score so that means it's got a good likelihood of um, success and it's going to cost me $2,800 this trade to put on. So why has it come up with that number? Well, over to here, I've actually put in that I want to invest $10,000 on the trade itself. And we go here for the trading range simulator, the probability of price outcomes. Now I've gone for a wide um, potential price move because we've looked at the charts and we've seen those downsides 15, 20, 30 percent, possible upsides 10, 20 percent, so it's pretty decent. If we wanted normal, you can see how that affects the trade, it makes it pretty hopeless, really. So, we do need a wide move, so we've got to be confident in that. Now, we want to understand the trade that we put on, it's all in plain English there. Going back to the PL simulator, we're looking for a target price of around about 35 to the downside. And that then returns a $666 profit, a 23.79% return. Again, we might factor that in our analysis at this stage. Is that enough for us? You know, compared to other, you know, the opportunity cost to do other trades and the risk to for the trade, the downside, is it worth doing? We click on there for a bit more detail. Like I say, we can see the cost, the max reward potential for profit is just under 40 percent so that could be another rule that you have in there I'm only going to look at trades over a certain percentage include or exclude um, from that decision process we can see the other PL target data and they have a strategy checklist as well you know spreading liquidity for a less traded option stock it's not too bad it's got a warning sign but it's not too bad earnings date coming up which we like and then we've got the option play score market trend and stock trends so there's a lot of data on there for us and if we like the trade idea all we then have to do is hit the trade button the review preview order but box comes up if we're happy with that we hit the preview order then button and then we just hit execute and we're off and running and then you've got to factor in like I say the exit strategy remember those key rules don't hold it into the last month especially being one of the more important and then after you're out the trade it's not over you've got to analyze the results you know statistically see where your strengths weaknesses are you know come up with the risk return numbers win loss ratios that sort of analysis put that back into the trading plan spin it around and like i say always constantly try to improve and learn from your trading and make the strongest possible strategy that you can do good successful trading is not just about taking a course it is a journey and because of that you need longer term support and content resource available to you to progress you through that journey hopefully to a successful finishing line now at the stop hunter i've put together all of that sort of stuff on our website www 
the stophunter.co.uk. So in this uh, section, we're just going to have a quick look at the website to see what is available to you. So welcome to the Stop Hunter website. And the first thing you'll notice is that we do cover off a lot of markets, stocks, and that's US, global, cryptocurrencies, all sorts of markets there, NFTs as well, Forex, commodities, and stock market indices. So we cover a pretty broad spectrum for you there. Now scrolling down the home page, you'll notice eight blocks and they are the areas that we really cover in some depth now over on the right hand side we have fintech and consultancy service is so we you know, go out to professional traders institutions schools universities and come up with trading financial markets solutions teaching programs for them there so you can click on those uh, blocks if you would like to find out more. Now we have our e-learning offering and if you clicked on there it would take you through to the other courses that we provide at the Stop Hunter. And quite excitingly the YouTube channel is one that we've been working on quite a bit over the last six months and there's hundreds of videos and a lot of content there for you that will support your you know trading journey and your objectives in there so I recommend that you go and take a look at that then we've got four other blocks that really get you into the nitty-gritty of whatever markets you want to trade we've got Forex stocks and options uh, cryptos and NFTs and my um, bread and butter the technical analysis um, area so if you want to learn more about technical analysis click on the link there and that will take you through to the relevant page. Once there, there's a lot to explore. And if we scroll down the page, we can find out what's available to you. There's simple questions and answers. Why learn technical analysis and those resources that I was talking to you about. There's free courses on YouTube. There's links to our e-learning specifically the technical analysis courses and you know how to access the YouTube channel and more specifically I get this asked quite a lot you know what charting package should you use so done a bit of an overview there of the reasons and ideas for selecting a charting package and down the bottom there the charting package that I use in the courses in YouTube and in my own trading trading view with links through to find out more on that platform so if you want to learn more about the Forex market and what resources we've got for you there, then hit that blue block on the home page and then scroll down within that page and you'll find videos on your reasons to trade Forex, Forex trading explained, a trading, a trade training course coming soon onto the YouTube channel. Links again to the YouTube uh, channel, you know, a video on how to find a good Forex broker, top 10 tips, and then the brokers that we recommend to you to be trading Forex. Now we've got Trade Nation that are CFD spread better. We've got Forex.com if you're a US citizen wanting to trade the Forex markets. Then we've got City Index and Forex Vox that are also CFDs and Sped Brett providers. So hit that yellowy gold block on the home page and it'll take you to the cryptos and NFT section. Now I'm hoping we've got you covered here. Uh, we've got you know loads of stuff on courses. Traders Club, which we'll talk about in the minute, upcoming you know, content, and then the exchanges that I recommend and use myself. You can see you click on those and it will take you through to them if you want to discover more about those. And trading bots, I'm heavily into the trading bots world. I'm going to produce some courses on that as well soon. But you know, if you haven't got the programming skills and you want to get straight into automating your trading, then here's five possible recommendations for you to explore again click on the blocks and it will take you through to them and then to finish off also got some stuff on securing your cryptocurrencies hard wallets and we recommend the use of Trezor in here and there's some offers down there for you to follow as well so hopefully we got you pretty well 
sorted on the crypto NFT space. And hitting the light green block on the home page is going to take you through to stocks and options. And again, you know, we've got a lot of course and extra free content here how to um, learn to trade options, uh, stock markets, you know, the ins and outs of how they work, Traders Club again, and the stocks that we cover. You know, there's a pretty good selection of countries there through the brokers that we use US, UK, European stocks, Swedish, Norwegian, Finnish, Swiss, Canadian, South African. Like I said plenty to choose from wherever you are in the world. And if you want to trade US markets directly, stocks and options, then we use First Trade and they have international accounts which can allow you to trade those markets from other places around the world. Then we've got a couple of spread bet CFD providers that give you access into other markets around the world, Trade Nation and City Index, South African stocks, US, Scandinavian, Swiss, Canadian, those ones I mentioned before. Now, if you want to find out more about them, click those visit links. They're all ones that I personally use and recommend. So that's the last of the sectors now I want to take you through to the Traders Club so a recent development at Stop Hunter is the Traders Club now we've run Traders Clubs before in different guises but this one is totally free to join on Discord it's very easy to set up you just go onto the block click on the link and then follow through what Discord tells you to do it's totally free like I said and it covers really everything analysis research you know, exclusive content, education, offers, competitions, the whole lot, ideas, and you know, I put some webinars and videos in there as well for you to follow. And I suppose one of the big plus points is it's a community, and there's like-minded traders, you know, all talking to one another. Share your thoughts, opinions, fears, you know, ideas, you know, all of that lot in this uh, club. And I'm also on there pretty much all the time, so I will pipe in every now and again, do a bit of analysis content, and you know I'm there to be asked questions. So it's a very good free resource for you to sign up for. So like I said, just click on the link and follow it through, and I hope to see you on there. So we're also on all sorts of social media, and you can click on the buttons there on the home page to join those um, different resources we've got linkedin got twitter instagram facebook obviously youtube and we've recently added tiktok as well and if you want to email me directly get in touch directly then use that email below their info at the stophunter.co.uk so I hope that little taster has given you an idea of the sort of support and resource we can offer you along your trading journey. A very big congratulations to you for completing the course, a very big well done. But before we can finish off, we've got to go over a few things. We've got to review where we're at. So let's summarise what we've learned so far. Well, you've had a great introduction to the straddle options strategy and you should now have the underlying knowledge, the theory of the strategy, and those component parts that go into making up the strategy, you know, basic options theory and trading techniques, you know, technical analysis and what we need to use to get it to work. And you know, it's all about volatility, this strategy. So hopefully you've learned what that is and how it impacts on the strategy. Now more specifically, you've learned about the structure of the strategy and why it will work and why it won't. You've learned about the risks and rewards of this type of trading strategy and you've learned how to find stocks and using various tools to be able to construct and execute this strategy. We've also seen that the strategy can be applied not just for stocks but across other types of markets like forex, commodities, you know, cryptocurrencies and you've learned how to put the strategy together and how to get it in and out of those trades and to manage the trades you're in. You've seen a lot of examples on how the strategy works and now you should be comfortable applying it to your own trading. So really, really finally, 
Thank you once again for joining me on this course. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it useful. Love to get some feedback from you on the course. And once again, good luck with the trading. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank mm -hmm. you.